and welcome to The Invincible Podcast, probably the best superhero podcast in the universe. This is a show where friends get to talk all things Invincible, a comic book and animated series by Robert Kirkman, Corey Walker, and Ryan Otley. Uh, on this episode, you're going to get our full thoughts and discussion of the season two finale. You're going to get a sneak peek of our chat with Robert Kirkman. Um, we'll announce the winners and launch another Guarding the Globe giveaway. And we have a bunch of listener messages and the most amount of doodles that we've ever had, which is fantastic considering it's the finale. Um, and of course, the latest Invincible news. Um, there are going to be time codes down at the bottom um, if you're watching on uh, YouTube and you can skip around wherever you'd like to. Um, mm -hmm. I am one of your hosts, Bill, and joining me today is Wyatt. Hey, everybody. You've got the Ryan Sedoti. Oh, hi. Yeah, that's me and my last name. Yep. <laughs> and you've got the sweet one, TJ. It's the sweet one. Hey, it's TJ. Excellent. How's everybody doing? It's been a long night. We had a fun conversation with Kirkman, but you guys, oh, yeah. you guys excited to do this thing? Oh, I yeah. Can this tell, is... I, and I can tell that you're in a good mood, Bill, because you didn't even insult TJ when you introduced him. You know I was what expecting I mean? Like, it. I was you preparing. just used the sweet one and we're like excited to have him here. So, you know, people can tell we're all in a good mood here. All right, maybe so we Bill, should do another take. Do another take. Do another take. <laughs> Bill said that we just had a conversation with Kirkman. However, that's going to be later on, and we're going to be uh, uh, releasing that. So keep an eye out for that. Yeah, it's, it'll, Here, be, it'll be released. The season finale. Yeah, so, so we're talking about the season two finale. Um, there are spoilers. So, you know, mm -hmm. first and foremost, we are a, an Invincible comic book podcast. Uh, we try to keep the spoilers to a minimum. Um, oh, yeah. but sometimes if it's relevant to what's going on, we will talk about stuff that happens in the comics. So just keep that in mind. Um, mm -hmm. but with that being said, if you guys can't wait, here's a little sneak peek of our conversation with Robert Kirkman. Robert Kirkman, welcome back to the Invincible podcast. Glad to be back. Very exciting. So I got to say, you joined us for episode 50 of this show where we talked about the end of the comic book, the final issue. And then you joined us again for episode 100 of this show where we talked about the season finale to season one. Now, it would have been really guys, cool. Do you guys this know what episode this is? It would have been really cool if this was episode 150 where we're talking about the season two finale. But you know what? Not everything needs to make it to 150 episodes. This is episode 144. Oh, isn't that crazy? <laughs> Six away. We have done none of this intentionally, by the way. This <laughs> just happens. That's insane. It's still surprising to me that we haven't seen any leaks as far as casting for season three goes, because again, they recorded their voice lines so long right. ago. Um, and 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 there's there's some big names. It's very oh exciting. Oh, oh, um, but uh, but yeah, and it, and it's yeah, and we've just you know been working. We're putting the finishing touches on season three right now. Uh, over the next uh, uh, little bit, but that's that's, yes. uh, that's a long. So if there's process. if there's any like invincible podcast exclusives you want to drop when it comes to like voices for season three, <laughs> now's the time you could do it. You could do it. You did give us an exclusive last time, or maybe it wasn't an exclusive, but it felt like one. So if you, yeah, I mean, if there's not, you know, we're waiting. <laughs> will Will Adam Eve return in, in season three? Adam Eve will definitely return in season three. You heard here's, it here here's, first. No, here's the question yes. then. Is there somebody returning in season three that was in season one that wasn't in season two? Yes, there are two big ones just off the There we go. Head. Nice. Uh, yeah. I can guess who they are. Yeah, I have some guesses. Yeah. yeah, guess and I'll tell you if you're right or not. Titan and Battle Beast. Titan and Battle Beast. Yeah. yeah. That is that is correct. Yeah. <laughs> oh! <laughs> two for two. The the subtle changes in it were just fantastic, dude. The fucking execution scene, just going down. But yeah, just oh, just yeah. the line the whole, and that decapitating whole that like sequence of seeing you, all those different angstroms was already like yeah. blowing us away. And then we got the the chainsaw yeah. thing. On you top did. Of I got to give credit. Tanner Johnson directed the episode and just mm. did an amazing Ooh. job. That, that execution sequence was boarded by Chris Palmer, who's like a really amazing board artist that works on the show. Uh, but like, we have a really like crazy talented team on the show. That's, that's doing, you know, great stuff. And, and those sequences especially were like, you know, really effective. And it was really cool the way everything was laid out and the way it all, uh, it all came together. Yeah. It did a great job of making us like understand angstrom's 
torment that he was going through because in the comic it's yeah. <laughs> you can't really understand why he's I mean you understand why he's a villain and why he's mad at, yeah. at Invincible but this really fleshes it out it makes us like oh well you can't really blame him for you know well I mean that him. to me is really the most like fun aspect of working on this show I say in interviews it's like working on a second draft and you know maybe I should have written a second draft when I was working on the comic but it's it's fun for me to be able to know everything that happens in the comics know where all the stories go and be able to kind of, you know, find like, oh, okay, uh, if I take this time to show more of what happens to Angstrom and the other dimensions, you'll really get a better sense of why he hates Mark so much. And it, it's, you know, it's new stuff, but it, it heightens things and, and, and like ramps up the drama significantly. So, you know, you can say, ah, oh, well, you know, the finale is pretty much exactly how it was in the comics, but hopefully it, it hits harder and is more emotional because we were able to find those little moments to add to, you know, what was already there and, and, you know, really kind of beef up the storytelling that was, uh, you know, being told in the comics. You know, Shrinking Ray is, is a different character and, and she's cooler and we feel like we could do more with her. So um, I think that, you know, realistically, it's a survivable it's a survivable thing. You know, all of her bones were broken and her body was pretty crushed, but it's something that she could, you know, survive from. And, and uh, you know, we just knew we had more story opportunity with her. So I guess I'll leave that at, uh, you'll just have to watch season three. <laughs> okay. Now, I mean, she was in a you know in her hospital bed uh chamber type thing it was a little hard to tell was she her full size or is she like stuck halfway or is she just yeah she's uh uh she i think yeah she's still stuck at her whatever size she was when she almost died because it's like a deliberate thing for her to change size yeah so, okay uh, so yeah 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 it was a good catch by ryan he was like i think she looked like smaller than she should yeah. be because it's a very really big cool. hospital bed. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, we made this hospital bed for giants, but she can use it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, one of my one of the great moments from last time you were on this show is you talked about um, being in the booth with all of the actors oh. and having just like moments like Ross Marquand doing Aquarius and deciding to do it like an underwater Jeff Bridges, like things like <laughs> yeah. that were so entertaining to hear about. Are there other moments from recording season two that like stand out to you as just either funny moments or or even really oh. intense moments obviously oh. the finale was crazy but <laughs> oh oh I, I yeah it's kind of about ross marquand again uh uh ross uh uh his his um he does omnipotus as well mm -hmm. yeah and, uh his omnipotus is a uh is is kind of a version of his impression of somebody uh that i'm not gonna name uh, uh kind of <laughs> like his aquarius was a was a jeff bridges if you listen to it though i think you'll get it pretty quickly but, I love uh, this. It's, I it's, love this. I'm gonna have to go yeah. listen again. <laughs> it was it was a very specific person. He did it, and I was like, like we're in the booth, and we were like, yeah, yeah, that's great. And yeah. he was like, oh yeah, I'm just doing my blank impression, and we were like, oh, okay, that's still fun. That. Yeah. Does uh does Jason Manzukis know how much love Rex Blood is getting this season? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> one one other big change from season one to season two blue title card no blue suit What's i know right that? it's almost like we're like foreshadowing a blue suit prior <laughs> to the blue suit existing on the way we were out. doing so many mental gymnastics trying to <laughs> yeah. figure out how is he going to end up in the blue suit by the end of these events of this season like thinking it was going to happen but it, it was it is all a done perfect, just to like, drive you guys crazy <laughs> <laughs> it's a perfect yeah. tone setter i think going into season well, three because even the people i think who haven't read the comic are seeing all of the people who have read the comic or seeing people sharing images online of like you're not ready for the blue suit era of invincible yeah. and it's such a cool me, way uh, to, to get uh, that excitement let me let me go ahead and uh, ease your uh, 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 craziness a little bit. Uh, by the time he wears the blue suit in the show, the title card will not be black and blue. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Wait, will it not have any black and blue in it at all? No, it'll be completely different. Oh, uh, be. I don't, can't. I can't reveal too much. I don't think it'll be black and blue. All kinds of exclusives. So, okay, okay. Like so, and subscribe. Uh, <laughs> like and subscribe. 
Yeah. I mean, I'm really excited for people to see season three. I think that every season gets better than the one before it. And I think that season three is an advancement on season two, the way that I hope season two is an advancement on season one. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm really excited for people to finally get to see it coming in. I'm not going to say. Thanks again, Robert, for being on the show. It was a blast. Um, just look forward to that episode. Robert did an amazing job. He flew back from Australia, Australia, like the day before he recorded with us, which is like he came back in time and the time zones were all messed up. So um, really did a fantastic job. Thank you so much for being on the show and, and being as fun as you were. It's, it's always a blast. So okay. um, yeah. on with the news and the main topics. Uh, so we got a season one art book released um, that came out last two, two weeks ago. And right. you guys all have it, the right? Shelf. Yeah. Yeah. It was about a week, week or so ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was tweeting out about it and talking to you guys about it. This thing is incredible. It is so yeah. good. And it's such yeah. high quality. Like the pages are thick. The art is like super glossy. Like everything is really, really well done. And the writing of it, like the way it's going through each episode. I was telling Wyatt, like I wanted to like read each episode because they'll be like, all right, episode one. And, you know, some, some, uh, uh, some, you know, whatever, the background about the creation of the episode, what happened in the episode and show some of the artwork from that episode. But like I couldn't help it, so I just kept going. And I'm I yeah. just finished the you know episode eight one, which is still only half the book. Now I'm into like the character breakdowns and all the like you know layouts for um, locations and everything like that. It's mm -hmm. it's a really really impressive book, and the 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 design of the book itself is in is really really cool. Yeah, yeah. And, and see if, that today they just announced the that book yeah. the like, season two art book is coming out. Yeah, Come on. yeah. So now it's, you have to start a new shelf, Ryan of of the the art books coming mm, out right yeah 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 that's awesome so uh jonathan reyes over on um twitter has been posting some cool concept art too are, are any of these in the art book too or is it I, just i don't know if his character designs are in there especially i don't i'm not even 100 percent he was on season one mm. okay you know what i mean so I'd have oh to yeah that would make sense that makes but sense so we probably was... see yeah, we would see some of these in the season two season art book. Two. Um, and it was cool seeing like he was posting a bunch of like the unused uh, invincible cosplayers. For yeah. The Comic Con yeah. scene. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and like the there's, references and stuff. There's a really cool one uh, with the one Viltrumite. Um, I think it was episode four of season two where the he got his head like squished and it yeah. broke sideways. He yeah. actually had a reference picture of face fractures and what they look like. Oh, like really? on the cool. same page so you could like see what he was referencing really cool stuff so you can find yeah. uh those over on his twitter and it's jonathan with an h in yep. the middle of it like j-o-h-n um so there's also uh videos via skybound insider so if you're part of that you could see the color with color supervisor so ashley yeah i was gonna say like there's one all about color design and color theory mm -hmm. and like uh what um you know what job they basically do and that was ashley stoddard and uh victoria thornberry who both work for the color department on this show and seeing and hearing them talk about what goes into that is pretty crazy because again it's just one of those many things and one of those many pieces to the puzzle to make this all come together they'll talk about like the different shades of blood depending on the lighting in the scene or nolan's hair is slightly different color in space versus yeah and incredible like, like those comic. yeah like yeah. it really yeah. is it's, yeah yep and so uh, there was another one, too, with uh, a character designer, Alex, uh, Alex Wilson. And um, so if you're not a member of Skybound Insiders, just joining to check out all those cool behind the scenes, like videos on mm -hmm. uh, the creation of the show is worth it. It's so cool. Yeah. Uh, last couple things for the news segment. Um, Prime Video X-Ray bonus content. So have you guys delved into this at all? um oh, yeah. whilst watching yeah. it or yeah I haven't, I haven't watched it on amazon yet i've only seen the screeners so i'm excited to go back and, and watch it with the extra yeah last night i binged through all of the like one through seven uh uh 
behind the episode like they're they're pretty short they're like three to five minute little snippets of usually Kirkman or Simon Rassiopa just kind of talking about different choices they made throughout the episode and Mm -hmm. what they're trying to set up or what themes and then today as of the finale coming out they did another one for episode eight of course but then there's one that is just wrapping up all of season two and it's Kirkman and Corey Walker just kind of talking back and forth about even they even get into like some of the original like design elements for Alan the alien when he was first coming up, like when Corey Walker was first designing him and for both him and Kirkman having to like revisit these characters, you know, 20 years later after creating them and Mm -hmm. how that kind of lends a different eye to it. And yeah, it's just a really, they're, they're short, but it's neat to hear their perspective on the things that happen in season two. And as well, like even them, not not revealing anything about season three but clearly season three is on their minds while they're talking about it even about where the story goes yeah and any additional like facetime we get with Corey walker like he is so important to invincible and i think he's just very behind the scenes he's a producer now on season two like full-blown producer um and then he does like all the character designs and stuff like that i think um most of the art that's in the art book is pretty much Corey Walker. So, yeah, the yeah. That, going yeah, through this art, art book is Corey. Going through this art book, it just feels like going through a Corey Walker art book. Like it's 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 really mm-hmm. cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it does feel like a really like high production value version of his blog. <laughs> like right? where it's like yeah. all of these things that are and that's and I mean talking about how much Corey is involved with the show now. I remember when season one came out and there was this feeling of like when you would see the the photographs and the frames and you'd be like, oh, that's clearly a Corey Walker drawing. And it, it kind of felt like, at least from the outside, that maybe that was as much as he was really involved in the actual creating art for the show. And it's cool to have seen, I mean, more so just learning more about the show and seeing more of season two, how involved he is and really seeing that like the style of the show is kind of like the next you know, the next things of Cory Walker art that we're getting, yeah. even though yeah. we're not necessarily getting like an ongoing comic or something to see his work sort of live on now in this different medium in animation has been so cool. Like it makes me, it makes me even more appreciative of the the design and the, the yeah. elements that we see in the it's, show. Watching the show is like watching an in motion Cory Walker comic. Like yep. it's, it's the closest thing that you're going to get to his actual art. Cause it literally is his art just animated by other people. So. And it is really cool in the art book, how they talk about how like, all right, this design has to be really simplified down because it has to be able to be drawn in all these different ways from all these different people and in different you know, like conditions. And it has to be able to turn and like all that stuff is really fascinating. Like I didn't get to watch the, uh, their, their conversation yet, the, that video that was just put out. Um, but man, between that and those like skybound insider videos that they keep doing, I want like a physical edition for this, for this season or, you know, yeah. uh, so like, I remember growing up with like, the Lord of the Rings and the special edition DVDs and all those kind of things. I just want to be able to like put on special features for Invincible and have all these X-ray from uh, Amazon, all the the videos with the behind the scenes creators and the design team. Um, but yeah, it's been great getting to see this much behind the scenes stuff because I don't know if you mm-hmm. get this with most shows, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the last thing is on over on Twitter, I believe it was either the Invincible HQ or Skybound released a cool video of a comic to screen for episode seven. So you yeah. can see all the really fun like panels and how they just it's recreated. So pretty, yeah, pretty much like scene for scene, sh- shot for shot from the comic book, which is pretty it's cool. Yeah. 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 So next up, uh, Guarding the Globe. Um Ubisoft Barcelona is giving away five hero dossiers to three lucky winners. That's right. Um, This is an awesome thing. So these are the gold ones, right? That you can get um, all five, all five, all five of the heroes. Mm -hmm. I like, I know Bill, how do we scheme our way? I I don't know. I don't know. (laughs) Like, I feel so, I feel kind of like maybe I should create another YouTube account. I don't know. I, uh, (laughs) I've been, uh, they just launched two new events today. Like we're actually recording this later than we normally would. So it's cool. It's cool getting to be able to talk about the weekend events when they actually happen. So one of the events going on right now is the GDA app where you can get a robot, which is Mm -hmm. really cool because he's one of the best. And then the other one is where you can just get more of the smaller characters. And I want to say, is it the 
no, it's not the Rex characters. It's the characters like uh, Aquarius and Martian Man. Um, oh, yeah. All like the, your like, uh, planetary defenders. I want to say defenders. the faction's called, yeah, Earth's defenders. Yeah, yeah. So any of those events where you get more characters to help level up are really huge. So keep, re you know, keep uh, um, refreshing those every few hours whenever they're done. Yeah, that's that's where the game gets really, really fun, getting more of those characters to level up. Um, so we've got our three winners. This time we've got Invincible Nerd, uh, Invincible Nerd uh, 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 3 for an E in there, in the word nerd. So congratulations to you. And uh, they said in their YouTube comment, help, I'm stuck at the end of chapter nine. <laughs> we are currently like halfway through chapter Oh no, I'm thinking 12. Alliance, Alliance, Alliance 12, oh, chapter yeah. nine. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. I think oh, I'm yeah, still, yeah. yeah, I think I'm still like halfway through 10. Um, yeah. I have a, I have we'll a tip for you. Slowly. So if you're stuck, um, just throw money at it. Just buy, <laughs> that buy that is one option. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the best. That's the easiest option. Or it can be like Ryan and somehow, somehow. Just, Wyatt was actually bringing up some great save. points the other day where like really make sure that who you have in your position is yeah. good against the, your opponent dude that helped yeah. me i literally had uh immortal was my front and then monster girl was to the right of him and i was fucking missing it by like that much and i literally swapped them and i beat it the first try yeah i was like this yeah. is so dumb yeah it was great. <laughs> uh our second winner is johnny bolt so congratulations johnny bolt congrats by your name by your name and then our third winner is spoder s-p-o-d-e-r and they said in their YouTube comment, really want to see Kill Cannon in the game. I think he would make a great criminal faction attacker. Yes, oh, a ranged yeah. attacker. For yeah, he would be perfect. He's perfect yeah. for it. He would be. Exactly. That would be really great. cool. So, uh, yeah, if you want, this is going to be, I think, our last giveaway. This is the last Boy. time we're doing a giveaway for, for these. And if you want to enter your chance to win, you just got to leave a comment on the video, this YouTube video. Um, I don't know. You, in, make sure you put your player name for the for uh you know for the game and i wasn't sure what else we should have them write you know we've asked what your favorite or like who you want to see in the game we've asked what your highest level character is this time i was thinking like what chapter of the campaign are you currently you know yeah. on how's that i was going to ask how much money you've spent on it so no, far no we don't need to <laughs> <laughs> if you want to throw that in there you can as an extra but i like ryan's idea as what <laughs> chapter yeah what level and chapter are you on uh, yeah. and whether or not you're stuck or if you need some help. Yeah. I'm playing right. it right now. Oh, I know. I I was I normally have it pulled up. I'm going to have to uh do it after the fact, but I need to refresh all my things and I was going to uh pull it up while we were talking about it, but I'll do it. I'll do it afterwards and edit it in. Edit it in. Edit it in. So the <laughs> last thing we've got before we delve into our uh recap and um discussion on the season finale are emails. Um, so you can email us um, at the invincible podcast at gmail.com. Um, there's other things. Obviously you can do like follow us on Twitter, um, Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, just search the invincible podcast. Um, and then also check out the invincible podcast.com where there's a really cool reading order. Um, if you want to read the comic book and then all the extra spinoffs, um, the other um, IPs that are in the universe, but their own thing, that's in there as well. Um, and then please, please, God, go and follow us on TikTok because Wyatt Lane does a fantastic job of putting these videos together. Um, and and it's just it's it's great fun. Um, you'll you'll get recaps, fun stuff. I think there's a really fun one with with I just saw it, the sweet one with TJ. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh my God. Good, <laughs> good stuff guys. Good stuff. So um, yeah, go follow us on all that stuff. And, and yeah, definitely. Oh, also if you uh, leave a review um, on like Apple podcasts, I don't know if you can do it on Spotify or anything like that, but definitely yeah. Apple. Um, sure. Yeah. Leave us, I think the last yeah. review we had was in 2023. So if you want to break the streak and be the first in 2024 yeah. and it's uh, April, now's your chance to do it. <laughs> <laughs> um so we get a ton of emails we can't read them all um live but we do absolutely read them all together so um if yours wasn't read today you know write and in some, again and and hopefully yeah. we can get to you 
And some uh, are going to be better suited for future episodes. There are a couple that are asking more. And it's like, we're going to talk more about season three predictions, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Right, now, right now, we want to get to your, uh, your emails that you wrote right after watching episode seven. This is all about you and episode seven right now um, and a few other things. But that's the focus of these emails. We'll be back soon with another episode where we can talk all about what you thought of the finale, your doodles from the finale and all that kind of stuff. But that'll be coming in another episode. Yeah. And you know what? That might be the main topic of another episode because we won't have an actual episode discussion. So maybe we'll go just email crazy. Who knows? Yeah, Who knows? Man. Only if we get more reviews on Apple, though. So if you guys want us to do a whole email episode, write Listen, a fucking review on Apple. There's one way. There's one guaranteed way that we're going to read a message from you. And that's if it's a, a review, you know, exactly. We're probably going to read that. Unless it's a bad one, and then we'll that's then true. we might not read That's it. We true. won't even say that we got one. We'll pretend. All right. So that. our first email, uh, Wyatt, why don't you go ahead and take that one? Yeah. So I have one uh, from Jen, and it says, "Hi, Invincible Podcast. I've been really enjoying watching the new episodes and listening to the podcast almost immediately after. I must say that I've been really enjoying the focus on Donald and Rick." Having the two characters' situations be so similar has been such an interesting thing to watch. In my opinion, Donald's story has probably been one of the most enjoyable changes the show has made so far. Also, I think the way they have been handling Amber and Mark this season feels a lot better than the comics. This might just this might just be because I've never been a fan of love triangles, but I think having Eve and Mark's relationship not be the main focus right now really helps recover Amber's character. The reaction to their breakup last season was incredibly negative, but Amber breaking up with Mark because of the Anissa incident is completely valid. So I hope Amber doesn't receive as much criticism this time. Yeah. Uh, some final thoughts before I add my drawings. Oliver is adorable. Debbie is just amazing. Rex is getting so much more love and I'm here for it. And the Stop show is making, about it. <laughs> and the show is Enough. making me hate Cecil a lot more than the comics. Mm. I hope you have a, a good rest of your day or night. Here are a few doodles of mine. I was going to draw Rex, but Wasn't. after his character or I, I wasn't going to draw Rex but after his character developed I just couldn't resist so don't mind how messy it is best Jen and she also did add at the end of and said thanks thank thank you TJ for reminding me to add my socials after last time my Instagram and TikTok is Genevieve underscore B-E-3 very nice -E -N -N -A -B -E -E -V yeah underscore B-E-3 Thanks, Jen. So you guys can look at your yeah. doodles I sent you. These are crazy. The Donald These... one is amazing. Yeah, yes. Donald one is the greatest thing I have ever seen in my whole life. <laughs> oh, the Invincible one, listening to Breaking uh, Broken Boy. That's yeah. yeah. Eating eating Canslock. Oh awesome. my gosh. Oh, and then, uh, the, the final Rex Explode one is. Come on. uh, you know, that's all right. It's all right. No, that's <laughs> awesome. It's really good. Cool. The thing that I the thing that I like about all of these is that they're they're so different yeah from one another and that one of donald is just so haunting i yeah yeah kind of love it like it's jen not good. for nothing but honest to god it's probably going to be my background of my phone i'm not kidding <laughs> yeah these are dope these are amazing if, yeah if Thanks, i have your okay i'm doing it yeah so good. really awesome all right all right tj um, is up next yep oh it's me um okay uh hello invincible podcast crew the latest episode did such a great job, like the comic, of having villains show up and ruin Mark's life at the worst possible time with both Anissa and Angstrom. I had an observation I noticed recently that our Mark Grayson has never appeared in a post credit scene outside of the Allen episode with 20 plus, uh, which was a 20, 20 plus minute yeah. post credit. Uh, we did see another Mark in season two, episode two. Uh, do you think this is intentional and will uh, continue or just a coincidence? I hope we don't get one in episode eight or this email will be useless. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, here is my drawing for episode seven of the best character in season two so far. I hope tracing is allowed. Best, Sam. <laughs> so before the doodle. So yes, that is interesting that Mark has never, our Mark has never yeah. shown up in a post credit scene. Um, I do think it is no I do think it is kind of a coincidence though because so he is so much the main character that yeah, anytime that's... we see a post credit scene it's always a somewhat ancillary thing yeah. so it just never really made sense to have that ancillary 
Oh, dang. Sorry, Bill. Dance to Larry. Um, <laughs> Arbulary batteries. Is that Arbulary. <laughs> Arbulary. <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. That's yeah. nice. There there you go. Um, yeah, and we didn't get one in episode eight. Yeah. So if this is a Rex right. Blow, if this is a Rex Blow drawing um, of the best character in season two, it so is far, not. I'm, I'm going to quit the podcast. It's, oh, it's not. All right. But good. It's a great drawing. It's a great. Really good. Good. Yeah. And yeah. Tracing. Oh, sweet. Tracing is allowed. Tracing is, that's yeah, of course, fine. It's allowed. Very hey, cool. Especially you're an anchor. When you, especially you're when an you anchor. say you're tracing. <laughs> yeah, that's all anchors that's, are. Yeah. Well, great nice. job. Uh, that's... I, I no no anchors <laughs> have a very yeah, okay. No, I was gonna great. say don't. <laughs> no, they're great. Not stand and, by that. And they're, yeah, no, we don't. We don't stand by what Bill says. Not even me. <laughs> Not no, even this Bill. Is fun. Stands by this what is Bill fun. says. <laughs> all right, uh, Ryan. I believe you have the next email. Yes, we've got one from our friend Luis Cortez. He says, hey guys, Hello. this is Luis Cortez again with my thoughts on the episode and a doodle. I loved episode 207. It's probably in my top five episodes of the show so far. It's another thing we should probably do. I can't wait. Uh, uh, <laughs> it has everything a fan could ask for. Human, action, tension, drama, Rexplode, and Octoboss. Really? Rex fighting Octoboss? Did TJ bribe anyone in the writer's room this season? We need, we'll need Dinosaurus fighting Tether Tyrant for Bill to get even. <laughs> You're damn right. <laughs> I'm, su I'm surprised you guys don't po uh, didn't point out the redesign of Philip Schaff for the show and his resemblance to Ryan Otley. It was also great seeing Otley immortalized in the show. It's, it is sweet retribution since the show removed Officer R. Otley from the Adam Eve special right before the Eve, uh, right before Eve fights her siblings. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, we didn't really mention it. I remember thinking it, but then we just yeah. never really brought it up. We, we talked about it off air, or maybe as we were watching it, I think. Yeah. And I, re I remember thinking that it looked kind of like Otley, but I didn't know if it was that intentional or if it was just a white guy with a beard and a baseball cap. <laughs> but then when, when we were watching the episode again, when Nicole and I were watching it, as soon as he showed up, she goes, oh, my God, that's Ryan Otley. And I was yeah. like, yeah, I mean, I guess it is. So, yeah. And, you know, Otley changed his profile picture even to that. So clearly there was some Super intention cool. behind that. Look at how uh, good it looks as my wallpaper. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It's it fucking does. perfect. It, it looks great. Uh, Lewis uh, continues, I find it interesting. The show changed the impression Mark takes from Flip Schaff after the signing. In the comic, Mark seems disillu disillusioned with Schaff and thinks his tricks are kind of cheap. In the show, Mark is intrigued and amused by Schaff's explanation. I imagine the show's writers deliberately made the change to keep the iron iconic joke, but avoid creating animosity between the viewers and animators. I think this change is a smart decision, and it makes the joke lighthearted rather than cynical. 1,000% agreement. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The difference is Kirkman is the one that's writing the joke about himself and poking fun at himself. Oh. You know what I mean? Whereas yeah. this is not Kirkman. It's the animators. So obviously it has to be like, you know, he's yeah. not going to. Yeah. Yep. Thanks, guys. And keep up the good work. Just episode eight to go. And Lewis includes his doodle of a squidman. <laughs> oh, wow. What do we have here? It's one of Octoboss's like henchmen. Yep. Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, that's really good. Nice. That is really good. What what did what did they say when they're like? It's just like of, oh, yeah, oh, Rex, oh, Rex is oh, like, oh, are are you, all of your henchmen that dumb? And he's like, oh, like it's oh. like a very sad sounding. Oh. One, of the, one of the funniest parts. Of that. <laughs> awesome, oh, man. Yeah, all right, cool. so I have our second to last email um, from Zach. Hi, Invincible Gang. Here's my one frame I drew for the episode. Rewatching episode seven for the finale. For the final finale? For the finale. Mm -hmm. Re oh, oh rewatching the episode seven for the finale. I realized this is the one I wanted to do. I realized I just had to start somewhere with drawing. Yeah. Uh, this moment is such a dramatic one, and the music does so much. I tried drawing all the Mahler twins in A Lesson for Your Next Life, but I couldn't crack it. Hands are so hard. So are <laughs> collarbones. Uh, other assorted thoughts on the rewatch. Um Walkerton nuclear storage facility has to be a nod to Corey Walker, right? Oh, I wonder mm. if there's another someone with the last name that ends in ton that I can't think of right now. And it's just a mashup of names, but I don't know. Could be. Could yeah. be. Uh, I love that the world of Invincible just has Kaijus. Kaijus. Is that how you spell Kaijus? Interesting. I think it's Kaijus. Must be in you. Oh, okay. Kaijus running around. Uh, this is like the third that Mark has fought so far. Um, mm -hmm. Music really steps it up this episode in particular 
with uh, the Anissa's introduction and the post-credit Viltrumite theme with General Krieg. Um, truth. Uh, the episode has some great character introductions overall with Grom, Octobus, and Anissa. Mm-hmm. Um, oh my god, Octobus. Uh, I love how the Viltrumites see what happened to Nolan and Mark as poisoned. Um, it's such a vivid choice of words, as in he's referencing being on Earth and yeah, the yeah. Hu- humanity is a poison, pretty much. Yeah, that was awesome. Uh, it's crazy to think the finale is upon us. I look forward to your breakdown on Friday. Love, Zach. And then here's the doodle that he is referencing. He drew Anissa with her hand around Amber's neck. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Amber's face <laughs> yeah, is really spot captured on. the fear. That's, also, a, that's an important yeah. part, too. Agreed. Yeah. Also, Anessa looks completely batshit crazy. Like, like <laughs> Anessa, Anessa meets, like, uh, Azula. Uh, yeah. yeah. The, uh, listen, I'm going to point out the vein popping in Anessa's forehead. Great yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. detail there. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Great detail. Right. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Good job, nice. Zach. Awesome. All right. Uh, and then our final email um, is for Wyatt. Go ahead and read that. Yeah. Uh, I've got one from Chris. He says, hey, guys, they did it. They beat the Amber Bad people. <laughs> man, <laughs> man, the writing could not be better. The complete misunderstanding of Amber's character by so many people in season one was so shitty, and I was so worried she would get absolutely trashed when the, inevit- when the inevitable breakup happened. But they reworked that entire scenario so beautifully, and I cried like a damn baby. <laughs> Putting them in a, in powerless situations, which ultimately makes the decision of their relationship for them, is cr- is a crazy twist compared to the love triangle in the comics. The feeling of powerlessness in any situation sucks, but when the stakes are losing the ones you love, it's enough to break you. I can't say it enough. The adaptations and changes have been absolutely mind blowing. Uh, that being said, I did look in the Invincible Universe handbook at Shrinking Ray's powers and abilities for answers to the size difference. So mm-hmm. Ray can shrink to variable sizes, even subatomically. My guess on her size difference is she was trying to shrink to whatever size would squeeze out of whatever opening she could and lost consciousness along the way. Fucking disgusting. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think, though. For my doodle, I drew the cameraman who got all the blood thrown onto them from Anissa flying through the kaiju. He was not having a good day. Anyway, can't wait for the new episode. Stay awesome. Love, Chris. Oh, boy. <laughs> no, great. Got, Chris. That is awesome. Great, great stick figure cameraman. Oh, my God. Very good stick figure. Yeah. That is- I think the blood is is great. Excellent choice on making him just a red stick figure as well. It yeah. saved a lot of work yeah. coloring the blood. Of course, great job. <laughs> yeah, just one of the one of the tourists on the cruise ship, just Amazing. not having a good day. Chris is so, like a a word guy. Like he just he's so he's, funny. Yeah, a like, word guy. They, you they are did not it. A word guy. They beat the <laughs> amber bad people. Like yeah. that's fucking hilarious. Yeah. Thank you so much. And Chris, I love, and- that, I love that Bill. You're complimenting like how articulate Chris is by saying he's one of those word, word guys. guys. He's a word, word guy. He knows how to put the words next to the other words that Chris, make the that's words. That's your that's good. your new sign off. By the way, love Chris. Word guy. Word guy. Chris. The dude disguised as another dude. <laughs> Chris also brought up uh, shrinking Ray, and I don't know if that will be included included in our clip with Robert Kirkman, but we asked that question um, yeah. all about shrinking Ray and her size and everything. So that did come up yeah. a couple times. So, yeah. And that does it. Um, so are we ready to delve into our conversation and discussion? The yes. finale. Here this it is. is it. This was yeah. a blast to talk about. Hope you guys are ready for it. And this is it. We'll be back soon with uh, more thoughts, your thoughts on the finale. Here we go. Thanks, Bill. So here we are with the season two, episode eight, season finale of Invincible. Um, this was, I, I, I personally was blown away. Um, we're going to do our first impressions of the episode first. So well, let's start with, let's start with TJ. TJ, what did you think? Oh, uh, <laughs> issue 33, as we all know, is my favorite issue of Invincible, of all of Invincible. Uh, issue 33 is also the very, 
the very first piece of original art that I ever bought. Literally the first. And it's uh, right there, right there with Debbie's broken arm and anxious. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Talking to her about, like, why would you say that to your son? Why would you tell him he's okay? Um, which was in the finale, which we'll talk about, which was very cool. Um, so, yeah, like, it it definitely delivered on my expectations from the comic. It, like, obviously what the show does it is always give, it always gives us more um than what we got in the comic and it delivered on that too like i mean incredible and not only that but like all the issue 33 stuff like the big finale stuff was done halfway through the the episode and then the second half all the other stuff we got was also incredible and emotional and just like character growth and surprises and yeah i just loved this episode loved it yeah yeah wyatt uh, yeah, yeah. I, I have to I have to <laughs> I have to agree with a lot of what TJ said this this episode was fantastic like it was probably one of the most tense episodes of Invincible which is saying something seeing as how yeah. several episodes in season one and season two have been this like very stressful you know experience to go throughout this one probably had the least amount of like humor compared to the rest of the season and I think that was because the things happening were so intense and so stressful. But yeah, it, adapting, you know, parts from the comic that are so iconic is always really exciting when we get to those moments, like you said, TJ. And this really, this felt worthy of a season finale for a story that is this just continuous ongoing thing that continues to build up until the very end. It, it I could see it being difficult for them to like kind of chunk things apart into seasons. And this really felt like, like a worthy episode to end this season on and the Mm -hmm. end of a chapter for Mark that he's now going to go into the next season, kind of carrying the fallout from. Yeah. Ryan. Um, Yeah. Invincible is a lot of things. It could be really funny and great action and great character moments. And sometimes it could be a bit of a downer. And like you were saying, why like this episode episode is heavy and the comic gets that way too. And I mean, so much of the comic, uh, you kind of like it kind of becomes a bit of a not a joke, but it becomes very self-aware that Mark takes takes this pretty hard and it is very hard on him to watch uh, him go through all this. And there's a line at the end of this episode that like shows me that these writers know what they're doing. Robert Kirkman knows what they're, you know, and it's they they absolutely nail it. Like it's perfect. It's next to perfect. The fact that they know them so well and on top of that sterling k brown and stephen young gave like this incredibly intense and like violent performance that you like feel and it's almost uncomfortable to watch at times so like it's it it was stunning it was amazing i can't believe they captured all of that and they know where they're going they know how to treat mark and how to deal with these kind of hard situations um so while it can be a bit of a downer of a episode that is part of what Invincible is. We like the ups and the downs, and this was one of those emotionally down episodes. But man, they nailed it, and I think yeah. that you know they know it so well that it's going to pay off. Yeah, I think that it it really goes to show how effective this show is because we knew pretty much everything that was going to happen, and I feel like I had no nails by the end of it, and it wasn't. It was like watching like um like the Joker talking to Batman in the prison where it's just like, it's like up here. There's not much happening, but it's up here. And it was just, it, it was exhausting. Like at the end of it, 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 I, and they, they crushed it. They killed it. So. Yeah, man. I so, mean, like you, I like you comparing it to Joker in that, in that scene. Uh, because like I, there was a time at, while well, I was at work, I was just listening to it and I had it in my pocket and just hearing Sterling K. Brown, like deliver certain lines, like I want to do it myself. And it's like, geez, like it's insane. It's insane. Both him yeah, and yeah. Stephen Young. There's a line that I actually wrote down on my notes, nice. which by the way, are all on the wall again. So if I'm looking <laughs> like this, it's not, I'm looking at my notes. Um, but I specifically wrote it down because I was like, holy shit. Like Sterling K. Brown was just a little, not monotone, but kind of like stoic with his performance up until now. And he fucking like lost it yeah. in, in this, yeah. in, in his scene. So it's yeah, crazy you guys... like, there was the interview that he had. Remember he was talking about being a villain and being all this. And it was like, okay, yeah, like 
you know, he knows where he's going to go, but we haven't seen that yet. And now looking back on that interview, it's like, he says some shit, you know, oh, yeah. he was, yeah, that was, that must've been scary in that booth. Yeah. 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 And the way that he, he says it as well. It's not just what he says, it's how mm -hmm. he says it. And, and it was fantastic. So without further ado, are you guys ready to get into it? I That's am. Right. Okay. So again, uh, the name of this episode is I thought you were stronger, which is a dead giveaway for anyone who read the comic. Um, this one, I think, was the longest episode coming in over 50 minutes, 50 minutes and 28 seconds. I think you're right. I'm not sure about the first part of season two, but I think this is the longest of all of season two, if I had to guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So the, the, the episode opens with a bunch of robots getting destroyed and it's Nolan um, being prepared or testing his strength to see if he's ready to be executed by the Viltrumites and a bunch of aliens come in after the robots are, are demolished and he uppercuts the fuck out of one of them <laughs> and he just disintegrates on the ceiling. Yeah. Like what an awesome like way to start the episode because the last one ended on a cliffhanger and it started with like, uh, yeah, so what are we doing? What are we going to yeah. see? What's going to happen? The way they tease into getting back to Mark is amazing. And having Krieg come out, and it just be like you, you hear the beginning of Fat Boy Slim, and it's oh, like, yeah, oh, the name of the game, yeah, yeah. oh and then man, it cuts to that. Some that's a song that someone's listening to and jogging down the street. Yeah, yeah. Uh, great transition. Yeah. And then that, that guy also gives us the title card. He's like, all right, I think I don't know his name was John or something like that, but he's like, once you do this, you'll be, you'll be you'll invincible. Feel, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah you'll like feel a million invincible. bucks. Yeah. So I mean, again, that's just. A, a fun tongue in cheek just to show like here's a guy yep. a normal human like pushing yeah. himself to his limit like this is this is like the hardest thing this guy has ever done <laughs> juxtaposed yeah. with what mark goes through in this episode it's yeah. Great. yeah and, and totally since we're since we're there this is where we get the title card and it cracks away fully revealing just the black and blue which yeah. we can talk about since we're talking about the episode now we don't see him in the black and blue suit so i think that is uh, uh, it's cool that it shows that they're very much kind of respecting that like the comics are out there. People have seen images of yeah. Mark probably in the black and blue suit mm -hmm. if they're on the internet at all. And so this is, it's more just like, it's still just a very ominous thing to set the stage for next season for sure. Yeah, it's interesting because now that means the black and blue is going to be the starting point for next season. So what's going to happen yeah. to the title card while he's in the black and blue? Well, maybe back the, to yellow and... In the... Uh season premiere of season two it sh it went back to season one title card where it was all bloody and then it like yeah. changed and then cracked so maybe in episode one of season three it does something where it's the black and blue but then i don't know changes yeah. somehow to like even further set up the black and blue I, suit by the i could see them three, or maybe i the, could see them the sticking yeah, I could see them sticking to like the black and blue the way it looks now, and then just sort of doing a repeat of season one where that continues to get bloody. We get a bloody and then black at the end and blue. of season three. Mm -hmm. Maybe that mm -hmm. changes to something else, but getting a bloody black and blue one feels very apt for how That's... he'll be in the black and blue suit. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, jogging, awesome Fat Boy Slim song, and then the tonal shift is just like a total one eighty, and then another one eighty. You see Mark fly into his house, and there he is, Angstrom Levy in all his glory. And I think he's got Debbie in like a like I'm gonna snap her neck yeah. kind of thing. And he's like, yeah. I could snap her neck. Let's see if you could be here fat, or you could get to me faster before I kill her. Um, and and Mark kind of is like, who are you? Like, and he doesn't remember who he is, which really triggers Angstrom. This is this was like, the first time. This, is, this like, is the first time. What less than 24 hours since he just saw Amber like with someone with their arm or, or their hand around Amber's neck. And now it's his mm -hmm. mom with someone around her. Like, yeah. 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 So this to me was like the hardest part to watch. Um, because once, once Angstrom kind of reminds him who he is and he's like that guy. And, and he's like, listen, you need help. You need help. And the way that Sterling K Brown says I had help, like, and he like, freaks out his voice cracks and he throws debbie and oliver why what Dude, happened 
Oh God, we all Why? like gasped and screamed. Like I, I talked about this. I think it's at this moment when, yeah, he knocks Debbie and Oliver over and we see Oliver's head hit the floor and then Oliver yep. starts crying. And I told you guys afterwards, I was like, listen, we can redeem Omni-Man. I, I can forgive him for all of the thousands <laughs> of people that he killed probably. I don't think I could forgive Angstrom for like causing Oliver to cry like that and hitting his yeah. head on the floor. That was an immediately like, yeah. I got so tense, even knowing where the comic goes and knowing that we're mm -hmm. probably going to get a similar story and that, you know, certain characters are going to make it out fine. It was still, they did such a good job of immediately, like just showing you enough things that cranked the tension up that you were just stressed out through this whole scene. Anytime you cut back to them by this yeah, portion yeah. too, I was like, I didn't really feel it as much as like what you just said, why until later. Cause like, like, Oh, throwing him to the ground. Like, yeah. Like Oliver hit his head, whatever. Like it's showing that he's the villain. Like he's serious. But man, yeah. we'll get into it. There were points where you, I was like, what the fuck? It, but, ra we'll it ratcheted there. up, yes. But man, yeah, no, I agree with you, Wyatt. The minute he hits his head, it's like, all bets are off. I'm He is the villain. Yeah. There, he is fully evil yeah. and everything. Like, it's amazing how they just, you know, hit it, hit it that quick. Yeah. 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 And there's moments in this, this entire 25-ish minute, like, segment of, like, this Angstrom Levy, like, part where... You kind of fall into like a comforting like okay they're just going back and forth and then angstrom will do something that fucking like ratchets back up right and this was the first one where you're like you're sitting there and you're like okay it's just normal villain talking to hero and then he does that to to um oliver and it just it made me sick to my stomach though i mean i don't know how it makes you guys feel but with being a parent like it really does make you nauseous and i'm yeah. sure it it hurts just as much but yeah. um so Mark gets angry and I love seeing the effects of like a hero flying. Like, I think that it's really cool. Like Superman, man of steel did it when he was like learning to fly for the first time. And you get that ring under Mark where he's like hyping himself oh, up. He's another, charging up. Yeah. He's charging up another dragon mm -hmm. ball Z moment. <laughs> and he dashes at Angstrom who was there with the portal ready to go. And well, I like the first, sorry. I, I like that. Mark gives Angstrom a look and Angstrom looks back at him and he goes, Oh, I agree. I Let's agree. Fight. Yeah. Let's fight. Yeah. yeah. Cause it's the moment so where, cause he's, cool. he's been threatening him the whole time saying like, maybe you could get to me faster than I could snap her neck oh. because I have my hand on her. Yeah. So the minute he throws it, it's Mark looking at him like I can get to you now. Yes. And Angstrom it's, is just like, bring it. Let's go. And it's, it's so, uh, oh, it's it's so Mark a person of this dimension, a risk taker. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, we're dude. just going to quote yeah. every, every line. Man. Yeah. <laughs> we can't do it. All. Every single one. Yeah, every single can. one. Yes, we can. <laughs> so we get the first dimension, which is the dinosaur one. And I, I, I don't know why I was worried that they would stray from pretty much everything that we saw in the comic. And I was happy that they stuck with it because it was so stupid and so crazy <laughs> and outlandish. Yeah. Um, one of the dinosaurs, didn't we? Who was he voiced by? Zachary Quinto is one of them, right? I think one I was Zachary so, Quinto. Yeah. One was um Bulletproof. Uh, mm -hmm. Jay yeah. Farrow. Um, Jay Farrow, yep. And then one was... I forgot her name. I don't know. Yeah, a lot of the the dinosaurs and the zombies later on are all mm -hmm. like yeah. other cast members who do other characters that they just had to do like one or two lines. It yeah. seems like yeah, the zombies are literally just brains. It's, mm -hmm. it's one line. Um, so then we go back to uh, the Grayson home, and Angstrom is holding on to Oliver. Oh, God, and he talks about how this dimension is the only dimension that he has ever seen Oliver before. Isn't like he has that interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which I thought was, was really, really cool. Um, let's see. And then God, this is what I mean. Like, it's just, it goes from a moment of like, you're like, okay, I'm cool. I can sit down and, and not start sweating. And then he fucking dangles. He just Oliver by was, his leg. TJ, is this the moment? That was my moment where I was like, Oh shit. Like he, yeah. like, like there, I know the outcome of the story, right? But I still felt like, oh shit, like they're in danger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> you in danger, yeah. girl. And what movie? What movie? Come on, <laughs> Ghost. Come I on, know. come on, that's so good. Come on, man, Molly. <laughs> you in danger, girl. That's so good. <laughs> Ghost is more of a bro movie than it is a chick flick. It really is. I'm sorry. <laughs> it is. No, it, it seriously is. So is. Watch. It is so funny. Watch it's it again, cool. and there's very little part that's romantic. The rest of it is just like. You know, it's been a while. Two, two bros laughing and having a good time. 
<laughs> so Debbie is the hero. I, I, I like guys. <laughs> Debbie does a flying fucking touchdown catch. Yeah. Right. And catches Oliver and slams into the chair. Yep. Like yeah. it I does really everything know. in her, everything in her power. To yeah. Protect that little boy. That's not even hers. Yeah. Yeah. Just it's it it was it was such an awesome moment and Debbie like shines too. So you in this you, entire episode, you said it, Bill, and I was gonna uh, kind of touch on it at the end. But I'll just bring it up now because you you already touched on it. But this entire episode, the only person that she's concerned about is Oliver. The only like mm-hmm. obviously she's concerned about mm-hmm. about about Mark too. But everything like right up to the end, even when the threat is gone, she's Oliver, 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 and I love that because like you said, Bill. Mm-hmm. It's not even her kid. She she didn't want to take care of him. Like this is that moment where you're like, oh shit! Like she is the mother, and she does have love for this this little boy. So love that. Continue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So now we get the second dimension. Mark charges at him. Is this when he like yeah. flies at Angstrom and all the like glass breaks and frames and everything like that? And he does yeah, another. It's it's, it's yeah. almost instantaneous, isn't it? Like he yeah. he flies in and then instantly gets gets transported into another yeah. dimension, mm-hmm. and it's they, they did it. How, how did they? How did they do? Why they did, did why we're so stupid? We so, think we're so smart. I mean, I think it became it was the. I assumed, and I think we all kind of assumed it would just be off camera. We're gonna get yeah. a Spider Man off camera reference. It's gonna be super quick, similar to in the comic when he's talking to Batman. Well, yeah, we and we get that. that. We get that later as well, right? Mm-hmm. They do do the off camera so bit I for us, that's so that's what kind of what we expected with Spider Man. Yeah. The fact that they just—it's just a multiverse Spider Man. It's it's so it's it's whipping. It's it's but so it's like this. It's, it's with yeah, one finger. Oh yeah, it's yeah. it's Agent Spider mm-hmm. and Professor Ock. Yeah, Ock, Prof Ock. Prof Ock. Mm-hmm. Dude, I mean, just like they go all in. We get a Spider-Man the, the, action scene. The yeah. dialogue too, where he says, "Like you're from another dimension, right? I know all about multiverse stuff, especially lately. Like the fact that we've yeah. gotten a bunch of Spider-Man yeah. multiverse stuff lately, and they have him say that is such a smart so way smart. to so like good. do this without having to get the license necessarily to put Spider-Man yeah. in your show. And I mean, and they, Josh Keaton, like yeah. having that voice coming yeah. out of the character saying, "Let's web him up." Like it's so great. It's fantastic. And we've gone back and yeah. forth about are they going to do Spider-Man? Are they going to do it like oh they don't have the rights so like they they can't just do that because it's it's business and whatever they did it with science dog and seance dog for kind of the same reason even though they already they do have the rights to it it was like a rights thing right so why wouldn't we think that they would do this like we we knew that just they could a character but, like Spider-Man. Uh, like so smart so good yeah now we know now i feel like we can use that little bit of knowledge and and apply it to <laughs> like the rest of the the series you know what i mean because yeah. we didn't think that they could get that close like he's literally webs let's we- let me web up this guy like he's yeah. he's using spider-man dialogue it was it was insane it was crazy yep it was crazy um so then we get back to oh it's back to debbie and, and mark flies in with the web on his back mm-hmm. just like the comic yep um and angstrom has a portal that he places under debbie and and this is when Mark stands down and he says, you're not a killer. That's that's not who you are. Um, you're a good person. You tried to save me. And Angstrom flips the fuck out and is like, how could I? I would never have tried to save you. That's like, you're a monster. You're a killer. Um, and he tosses Mark into another dimension. This Is, is this when he pulls out a pocket knife? Not yet. Not okay. yet. Not yet. Not yet. So but something happened if, here, if, right? Like he tricked Mark in a way and made him fly upward. Yeah. So he, he dropped oh, the portal under Mark, down, under Mark dropped and down and then he yeah. opened it up and he flew up into it. Yeah. Smart. And then, and then it's, it's Levy flashing to seeing all of his oh other God. selves. So we get a episode one flashback to that, that version of Angstrom. The second one is Angstrom with his son and his son's pet Fox chainsaw. This, dude. This Incredible. moment, more, all right, all right, more than the Spider-Man thing. Yes. This yeah. got, got us. Like, as comic book yeah. readers, I can't believe they did this. So when they, this was when, they, when they showed it, we were all watching it together. When they showed it, I'm like, I saw him with a fox, and I immediately said chainsaw. And then and he says when it? he said chainsaw, we all were like, holy fuck. Like, we all, like, cheered. 
Oh my yeah. god. Cuz we would have been excited if if it just showed the fox, right? But yeah. then he fucking said chainsaw and we yeah. flipped the fuck out. And I know we'll keep it we'll keep it spoiler free because we don't mm-hmm. want to spoil things just to say that obviously this is something from later on in the comic. It is just something that like of all the things that I'm expecting to see them pull in from the comic and the different Easter eggs, this is something that is from a period of the comic that I would never have guessed we would get anything from for years. So for yeah, that to happen that. and it'd be the furthest thing from my mind was such a like delight. It was such a cool like just a little gift to all of the comic readers who have read as much of the comics as we have. You know? However, mm-hmm. however, uh, that thing that you're talking about way later is really just a nod to Angstrom's son. Um, but in this, in the episode, Angstrom's son fucking dies. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Kate, mm-hmm. Kate Mark obviously does not him. happen in the comic. So yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, well, there's, 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 there's multiple. Are there versions, more than one of him? I mean? Like, is that, yeah. Did, yeah. did, did one yeah. of them come and get this chainsaw? Like, uh, yeah, like, yeah, that's something that we can discuss later, but that's interesting. Yeah. Yep. So there's a few more, um, flashes that we get. So we get a toeless, a, uh, an open toed version of Mark, which looked really cool. Dude, I thought um, he was barefoot at first, but then on yeah. it's, more it's watches, the finger, it's, instead of it's, fingerless, it's toeless. <laughs> When we were watching, I was like, were those toes? Why were there toes as he was flying? <laughs> yes, toeless. Only an evil Mark. Could, we got Cape Mark, toeless well. Mark. Yep. Mm. Um, so he comes down and smashes a throughway and and impales um, Angstrom's wife. So he sees his child die. His wife dies in front of him. And then there's a dimension and that flashes to him being a cop. All these flashes and changes are edited in a way that they're always facing and in the same direction and in the same position. Yeah. So it'll flash yeah. away while he's kneeling down and it'll go back to Angstrom Levy kneeling down and then yeah. to the next person. Like, and it always does that. It's great. It's such and a clever so- way to show that it's our Angstrom experiencing all of these almost like he is going from one of them to the next. Yes. Like in the way that we're seeing it edited, that's him trying to piece all of this together in the different consciousnesses that he has all stuffed into his brain. Like such a, it's a clever way to make a a segment that is a lot of, you know, quick cuts to different scenes, but make it more cohesive. But the thing too, that, that we kind of skipped over that I want to go back to is how they did it. When he first started hallucinating, uh, he started remembering how he became angstrom, like, like deformed and remembering Mm -hmm. like, Oh, like maybe, why would I? Why would I save Invincible? Because and like, Mark told him, him going crazy. So like, he... oh, like, like I do remember, like taking it off and volunteering to take it off and being like, this is not what I want. And then, and you're like, oh, he's starting to remember. He's starting to become good again. And then it changes to the flashback to the season two premiere that we got, where uh, Invincible was like terrorizing him. And then we got the chainsaw and then we got the other one and the other one and like i like how it started because it's like oh like i know what direction they're going and then they went in the in a completely opposite direction Mm -hmm. yeah yeah yep so we get a dimension where he is a cop and invincible just comes and flies through them all blood everywhere it's raining blood he's got a cop in the background pops her head off um we get i think a dimension that is like oblivion song because we have like oblivion angstrom levy okay all right uh, yeah. in, a, in a cape with a staff, and I'm like, "Come on, man! That's that's Oblivion song all day long." Yeah, I um, did feel like it. And then we get the most disturbing one, the worst one. That, yeah. like, how does this? How does the show do? How, how do? Yeah. How do they do this? How do they yeah. keep upping it? How this, do they keep like, upping it? This seemed borderline. How did they get this a- approved? Type mm-hmm. thing. So right? it's a concentration camp, pretty much, with a bunch of people sitting, and Invincible just walking down the line. And fucking decapitating them, chopping their, head their heads are flying, with his bare hand. flying off to the side. Yeah. Like, what can we even? Just say? a big wide shot where it's him walking down, and you just see the like red splatter that's along the ground. And the as little he's head walking, go. and it's hangs so, from like waiting for his turn in line. Like, oh, it's so. Awful. We started this by saying, how can you forgive a guy that let that happen to Oliver? Yeah, and they needed they needed to justify his his rage they needed Mm -hmm. to justify his intention right here and now we're saying how do they even get away with showing that and this is we're supposed to say hey this guy is living this and feels this that's how think about how mad you are 
Ryan, Wyatt, and TJ and listener about that one thing that happened to you in this one life and how pissed off you got about it. Now imagine living and having who knows how many consciousness is in your head and you're, you, the, they happened to you. These things, you yeah. experienced them for all intents and purposes. You can't, I mean, you can blame him for being a terrible person, but I mean, for the monster that he created, like that's what they, that's what Invincible does, man. They're showing yeah. all sides. It's terrible. You almost feel yeah. you you feel kind of bad for Angstrom, which it really does. Really like we 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 get a little bit of it in the first episode of this season, but this scene and and these flashbacks specifically, I think, show why Angstrom is such an interesting villain and why the original comic and this show writes him so well to show why that's interesting is because it does what invincible does best is take a very like very kind of wacky sci-fi concept of like oh if somebody could go into the multiverse and collect thoughts from their other versions but then what's it really like if all of those are stuffed in your head and there's this one there's all this trauma that you're stuffing into your head too from these other dimensions and what would that really do to you it would kind of drive you insane so it takes this you know high high sci-fi concept thing and makes it emotional and grounded and scary like yeah yeah so good i like how in the first episode we were talking i think it's the first episode angstrom's in the first episode isn't he yeah this season how we were like oh it's crazy how like it's the angstrom that we saw in in that flashback or that you know the the intro that it's his consciousness that's like getting to him how we were so done it's like literally all of them all like yeah it's it's all Mm -hmm. of them and it's so much worse than we could have imagined um so a portable opens up, he brings Mark back, and Mark has a sniper sniper rifle or an assault rifle. Can we talk is, about this? Yeah, like it's so it's it's got a yellow it's yellow and orange. Do you guys and, know what this okay. is? Okay. Is it so, a Fortnite thing? It is what? the Dragon's Breath sniper rifle from Fortnite. It's not even no. drawn. It's no. the style of Fortnite. It looks like they took a PNG, like it. the model from Fortnite, and it's in his hands, and he whacks oh my God. with it, and then tosses it to the side. Which is canon. It, now it now it makes so it cool. makes it makes what? invincible in <laughs> Fortnite canon. It's yes. canon. That's why, and and he even says later on, time moves differently in some of these dimensions. I don't even know how long I've been here. The mark we're playing with in Fortnite has been sent there it's by Angstrom there. and has been stuck there playing Battle Royales and it's going to take a Dragon's Breath sniper rifle and whack Angstrom with it. So when I, was... I realized that, it has been so hard for me not to text you guys and be like, guys, did you realize So I, there were multiple times where I'd be watching it and be like, I got to remember to pause and see what that is yeah. and I kept I, forgetting yeah. to. Same. I knew it was what? something because it's, it's so colorful and it's like a very unique design. It's not just like, it, I knew it yeah. was something. That's fucking incredible. So smart. Yeah. And it's not, so like smart. I said, it's not drawn in the style of the show. It is very clearly like the model from Fortnite that they just like put into his hands because it's only there for a few frames. Yeah. So you don't really notice it and it doesn't linger oh or anything like God. that. No, it's it lingered. Such a I cool remember when detail. we watched it, I'm like, that was not just yeah. a gun. Very like, clearly yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> All right. Wow. Ryan, are you ready to, are you ready to move, move back? We're good. We're good. You, go, go, go. I took okay, screenshots. Right. I'll send it to you later. All right. <laughs> So, so Mark is back now and he's like, listen, just, I'll let you kill me. I'll, I'll let you kill me right now. If you just let them go, we don't have to fight anymore. And Angstrom takes a little pocket knife out because he, 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 Mark refused to move pretty much. And Angstrom throws the knife at again, another moment where you're like, Oh God, Mark or Angstrom throws the knife at Debbie and Mark flies at it in slow motion. So fucking intense and barely grabs the knife and then flies into another portal just which, as stupid and, and in every dimension ends. oh mm-hmm. yeah yep yeah. yeah. and then he this is where he crash lands into the zombie dimension mm-hmm. which which i think was a i i, I hate to just be like un, insatiable when it comes to invincible <laughs> stuff but like th- i feel like this was a missed opportunity to like you know, nod to the walking dead, but we got so much other stuff in this and, episode. Yeah. And that it's not like, about. it's not like, Oh, they did a, a zombie thing and didn't do walking dead. Well, no, not only did they do the zombie thing, but they did the zombie thing as it exactly is in the comic. Like yeah, they say they brain. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. They say meat. They say meat. Yeah. Yes. They say meat. They, or they, meat. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. it. And so, it's and I'm sure, I'm sure turning it into a TV show, I'm sure there's some rights issues with yeah. 
whether or not Walking Dead is premiering it. on an Amazon yeah. show, you know yeah. what I mean? That yeah. could have been complicated. Because it's Skybound, but, but it's also to... AMC, so... But yeah. similar yeah. to, you know, Spider-Man, they could have had just a kid roll up with a hat on that sounds like yeah. Stephen Yun and be like, yeah. come with me or whatever. And But yeah. it might not have been worth it because you're bookending this with so many things that to put that in there, is that a little too navel-gazing? And it's like, I don't know. Navel-gazing? You know, you know like i don't know what navel you're gazing down yeah. at your navel and yeah. you're gazing at it i mean how what doesn't make sense about that i mean <laughs> <laughs> fucking ryan's word of the day so you got a calendar is that on your calendar you just tore that off for yesterday no no there it is all right so uh now we go back to mark's dimension and it's debbie and she's fighting with angstrom and i think she like slashes at him this whole part, it kind of like blends a little bit. Is this bit in when my she mind, hit them but... with the duck? No, not okay. yes. It is. Oh, it is yeah. the scene ish. But so she's like fighting with with Angstrom, and Angstrom opens up a portal as Mark is flying, like Ugh. right at Debbie, yes. right at Debbie, and almost takes her out and obliterates her. But he like barely misses her. Um, let me see here. That was one of those moments and... where we're all just like, Ugh! <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and I think. I don't know if he stayed. He, no, no. He so he flies and he goes almost directly into another portal because it stays with Debbie. This is where she gets thrown on the table. She takes the duck, TJ the duck, and I'm pretty sure it's the pink and, one, and cracks it over his face and and breaks it. It's mm-hmm. broken now. Yep. Um, and this is oh before that she's she's talking about how, um, I think this is when Angstrom is like you know you've joined mark and and nolan and taking over the world you're like innocent, they're just as this. bad yeah and she was like well no i'm the one who raised this mark who saved the world and you're the villain in this yeah. situation this is this she, yeah now i get it this is why you're mad because mm-hmm. you said that mark this is one of the only dimensions that mark is good and this is the the one dimension where not only is mark good but the only dimension that you're bad and it may, it's pissing you yeah. off and that made him even more pissed off. Yeah. 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 She said you Mark, turned out to be ah, the, rot, so the rotten one here. And then he mm-hmm. says, I'm not the villain. I don't, how do we forget? I, I forgot that it was going to happen. Cause I was just so lost in the moment, but he snaps her fucking arm. I don't want to like yeah. spoil it for like Liz and Riker and stuff, but <laughs> whatever. <laughs> whatever. Yeah. But, but insane. at one point he like, smears blood on her face and says like your legacy is drenched in blood or something yeah, along yeah. those your, lines your yeah. family's legacy is blood yeah is blood yeah, yeah. um so we get um mark sitting by the campfire and this is when he's talking about why what you had talked about and it's, and it's kind of like explaining that time works differently in all these dimensions so what mark is experiencing what's just minutes for debbie oliver and angstrom is like hours days for, yeah. I mean, Mark's sitting at a campfire, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And just chilling out. Um, and then we get a little bit of a dimension montage. And there's yes. <laughs> there's a couple here that I want to really, really like uh, talk about. So first one is a caveman dimension. Second one is omnipotence. Yeah. He's mm-hmm. just like, you know, How in space. You I'm like, How, energy. Energy. Yeah. Yeah. How did you get here? Where's Omni-Man? <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, and then we get the the fucking classic scene from the comic sitting on the rooftop. You see the cape flowing and he's like, okay, so you dress like a bat and your name is, don't you think that's a little lazy? Like verbatim yep. from yeah. the comic. So good. Yeah. Yeah. Could have been happier. Um, and then we get a deserty one that looks like Mad Max. Yeah. That's right? definitely Mad Max. Yeah, very Mad Max. Max. Yeah. Post-apocalyptic. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Um, so a portal opens up and, and Mark, in my opinion, he's starting to learn, right? He's just like, he just <laughs> yeah, kind of sits yeah. there and waits. Yeah. And then extra, the way that extra pops his head through, like, yeah. kind of looking around a like, little oh, bit. Oh shit, is he dead? Did he, yeah. did he get killed? It, it kind of like made me like laugh a little bit. It was a little bit of levity in this episode. Which it, yeah. which it looks like that in the comic too, just peeking his head yeah. through. Yeah. But this one, I don't know. It just, it, again, the show, it, all the feels are, are it hits harder, you know, Yeah, yeah. whether it's yeah. funny or whatever. Um, so Mark 
as soon as he sees Angstrom, he flies through and he doesn't even stop. He just keeps going and takes him right out of the house. Well, he um, he, he does fly through, but then he's, he does stop at the house and he looks down and sees Debbie, bloody, broken arm. Yeah, and, and then he, he just looks out. at him and there's a he beat goes, and you see outside the house and he just smashes through it. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Glass everywhere. Right. Yeah. From like the from you like see it from the street. And he yep. screams out. Uh, what did you do to her? Yeah, yeah, there's already the rage that he has, it seems like, just from being stuck in all these dimensions and being exhausted. And then looking over and seeing that Debbie is hurt, too. It's just like, if he was tired before, it doesn't matter. Because yep. now he is, like, so, like, fueled by rage that he's yeah. going to just... Well, yeah. we we'll see what he does. So then we get Angstrom saying, you know those doctors that fixed me up? Well, they also made me stronger, too. And he starts to fight back. And he's kind of holding his own up against Mark. Um, and they, oh, he planned, he, he, this is where he says like, you know, the whole idea was for you to get weak so I could kill you with my bare hands. Yeah. Um, and they start fighting through dimensions and that's it's just awesome. Through. Yeah. That's falling through dimensions. Um, they, they are falling through the sky and it looks like it's, it's a dimension of just a bunch of robots. Um, we get a desert dimension with people that have the dune nose yeah. thing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they do yeah very funny yeah mm -hmm. and it's very i mean one of them's wearing like a I, burger mart shirt oh yeah they, cool. they, they literally it's like their planet's being it maybe it has sandworms and it's being terraformed yeah. you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. yeah what i like but about I love burger mart I loved about this is like angstrom is walking towards invincible yeah and there's two are you gonna do it people yeah and and he pushes the two of them out of his way and just like Por like portals them to other dimensions just like as yeah. he's talking just like man so like, you can miss it if you blame i'm pretty sure that so was good. that was you know i want to do it myself and he's like yeah. he just yeah. pushes them he's so like oh i did God. i did want to I, I i literally said tosses two people into portals because i wanted to talk about it a little bit do you think that this could be like a trash bag in London kind of thing where we see these two people in like <laughs> random dimensions no they didn't <laughs> like, like a you second could, it would be funny they could do it they could. they could. I don't think so, though. But they didn't yeah, really I, I focus either, on but... it, which I like that they didn't focus on it. You kind of have to. Yeah. yeah. It took it took a second watching of it mm -hmm. to be like, oh, he just like fucking yeah, like <laughs> shoved those people out of. He couldn't just push them away, even though he's strong. He literally had to portal them away. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Dick. <laughs> um. So then we end up in the actual, uh, desert dimension, that is where he gets stranded, um, and. Mark turns it on and he says, do you have any idea how much I've been holding back like this entire yeah. time? Yeah. And he beats the living fuck out of Angstrom. There's a scene he where he hits, he hits Angstrom and Angstrom's flying yes. through and it's his perspective. Like there's a GoPro on him and you see the sky yeah. flipping and, oh Mark, God, and Mark gets closer and closer. Yeah. And as you see it. Oh my God. And I think that was a clever way to show that like Angstrom could not portal out of that that moment he yeah, had gotten true. rocked by mark so hard that his world is spinning and he can't just you know open up a portal this is the this is that moment that culminates season two though this is that season two finale moment where he's saying you have no idea what i've been through you have no idea what i've gone through and and like i've, I've, I've held back on this and i've done that like this is everything that he feared everything that he's been talking about throughout all of season two kind of coming to fruition yeah. And just yelling and I'll never let anyone hurt my family and yeah. just yeah. beating him. And the moment, I mean, obviously the bloody punch and everything. And there's obviously the, the parallel to Omni-Man last season finale, but the bloody, like him punching and it being that perspective. But the thing that got me was there's a moment the where the yeah. hand, yes, where Angstrom puts his hand up to yeah, just, dude. I called it out while we were watching just it. just bats it away. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God. Mm. And the yeah. music as well in this scene, there's a moment where it starts playing the Invincible yes! theme. Yes! And yeah. it's so heroic, and then it and just it descends drops. and starts yes. to, like, bend downwards. Because you have this moment of, like, yeah, the hero is going to beat the villain. He's going to do the hero thing. Oh, no. Oh, He's not stopping. Too far. Yeah. Oh, God, that's a lot of blood. Oh, no. Like, it's such say... a great turn. And, like, you feel it. You cringe mm -hmm. while you watch it. Like, I want to say even his theme. Like, the da 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 I want to say... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even when that's building, it's slightly like off. Like something feels off yeah. about it. And then yeah. when it really starts to get going, you're right, man. And it is, oh, I'm so glad you brought that up because I noticed that. And that yeah. is really smart. Yeah. 
So we get the scene. Uh, it doesn't show Angstrom. So for those of you who haven't read the comic book, it literally shows what he did to Angstrom. Uh, we won't talk about it here. We won't spoil it. Mm, not at this what? point. Do it doesn't show it? Nope. Oh, it, oh, it, it does right. this. Yeah, it you're right. It does this. You're, you're right. right. You're right. It does. Um, so what I liked about this, though, is it was very cinematic the way that they did it. It shows the cameras behind Mark and the carnage is in front of Mark, but it's blurred out almost. It's like fuzzy. Like it's unfocused a little bit. And it really yeah. it feel. Did you notice that, Ryan? What you look confused. So there's a scene where it shows Mark standing over what he had just done. And it's it's like unfocused. On, it's out of focus. on, on um, Angstrom's legs. Angstrom's legs, the blood, like it's all kind of like it feels really like unfocused and and mm. unnerving. Like you kind of like experience what Mark, Mark almost throws up. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. is where he says, yeah. "Yeah, this is where he says, I thought you were stronger." Mm -hmm. Um, which, as I was watching it again, like I was like, "Man, that sounds like if I got in trouble, I would have made an excuse to make it not my fault." Mm -hmm. But I mean, Mark has this outer, I call it an outer monologue, um, where he is he like fighting about. with himself. Yeah. 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 But I, yeah. I think yeah. it was exactly what you said. I mean, I mean, I think there's a scene in between here, but I'll just get to it. Yeah, now. It's, it's coming. The, yeah. But, uh, but he talks about like, you know, I thought he was stronger. I thought he was stronger. He made me do it. I had to do it, you know, because I think he also knew that him saying, I thought he was stronger was an excuse. Like he could have held back, but he didn't. He lost control. Yeah. Yeah. He literally said in that whole like outer monologue part, he's, he says, I, I wanted to do it. I wanted yeah. to I do it. And I don't know if I, 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 yeah, I didn't know if I could have. Yeah. And that's um, like bookended by him saying like, he made me do it. Like he was threatening my family. He made me do it but I wanted to do it like yeah, this, man. this outer monologue that you're calling it bill is I think one of my favorite performances from Steven Young throughout the entire yeah. show. Like the way that he is grappling with the fact that he lost control and killed someone in a rage for the very first time, not just killed someone because he made the choice consciously to do it, but mm -hmm. that he could not stop himself and he couldn't control himself. Like seeing the aftermath of that, of him dealing with it, walking around in the desert with blood in his hair and mm -hmm. like all over him and he has to wipe it off his face like it's such a like haunting the music in this scene too is such a good does such a good job of making you feel like eerie and uncomfortable and it's it's this feels like the thing that mark is going to carry through season three if season yeah. two was all about like what it meant to be his dad and now his dad you know turned out the way he did at the end of season one it feels like season three will begin with him dealing with this moment and what it means for him as a person like i oh, like that yeah so yeah. Good. yeah because i mean the first season is all about someone else being bad and what they did to him right like yeah. oh i'm i'm sad and i'm going through a lot of shit because of what my father did to me but this is what he did i did yeah. this thing and yeah, in the first it's half of season a, two it's, he meant, he meant season two is all about no, no, no. season oh, one. Okay. What happened with like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. like this, everything that's been going on, what Mark's been feeling is the aftermath of what Omni-Man or Nolan, his dad did to him, but this mm -hmm. is something he did, like mm -hmm. yeah. the guilt and the shame and like how you can't, he can't trust himself. It's just so yeah. much. And they yeah. did such an amazing job. All like, the Mark conversation is... he has with people and the second half of this episode is all about that. It's like he, he yeah. doesn't trust himself. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, so before that, we get a, a short scene of Debbie, uh, TJ, you were talking about this, where she's sitting on the floor, broken arm, still holding on to Oliver Passed out. and Cecil, yeah, Cecil comes in with the GDA and, uh, she's like, Oliver, what uh, Oliver, like, she's still just concerned about this baby. Um, and Cecil is like, let's get her a medic. Let's get you somewhere safe. Um, and then we get a scene, the prison ship. So mm -hmm. no one's oh. walking. Uh, one, one one line I want to call out um, before we get away from it was when it goes back to Mark, I think after that, and he's like wandering the desert still. And he's like, I'm stuck here. I'm stranded here. Like, and then he like starts laughing and he goes, Angstrom mm -hmm. Levy, he kind of won. And I love that yeah. line. I think that's so cool mm -hmm. because like, even though mm -hmm. Angstrom is dead, um, 
he he still killed Mark and that's all he cared about. I just like that line. I yeah. want to call it out. Yeah. Yep. So we get a cool scene of of uh Nolan's getting his like he's being held by two Viltramites and getting punched over and over again and Krieg comes in and says, you know, you have to be healthy enough to be executed, but you know, they didn't say anything about a few bruises. Yeah. And then he he, you know, demands to stand on his own two feet and walk out. Um and he passes Alan, which thank God, man, we get some fun some Alan levity. Moments. Yeah. 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 Alan's um, Alan, that, like Alan's head and how it like turns. He's like, oh, you know, like, I'm here for you. He's like, hey, like, remember oh, me? Remember yeah. me? Yeah. And no one's like, yeah, oh, really yeah you want. <laughs> you, like, so, <laughs> so I'll bring it up here. I mean, this is when we see Nolan with his bruises. They all have matching bruises. Yeah, they all have the same eye. Yeah, I, 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 I had that the in right there too. Yeah. Yeah. Especially mm-hmm. like yeah. when I, later on when Mark and Debbie are in the house, like you could see it one spot oh, yeah. the Especially other. when they're yeah. talking. Yeah. What but, I took mm-hmm. that as, like the 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 metaphor sort of that I took that as, is when you see Mark and Debbie at the end of the episode, and it really highlights them standing next to each other, and you see it it very much is like a symbol of like the trauma they've gone through and what the world has done to them. And ending the episode the way this episode ends, I feel like it's meant to show that like Nolan is starting to realize how much the world, the world that he was trying to be a part of, the Viltrumites that he was trying to be a part of, has hurt him too. And that he like is more like them and more like Debbie and Mark than he wanted to believe he was before. That like it's, still it's meant to show memory. that, yeah, that in their own way, they are all still connected in a small way. Like it's mm-hmm. very, just a cool that visual might, way to kind of show yeah. that. I'm curious if we find out or if we ask Robert Kirkman about that one. Yeah, if that's, yeah for sure. I mean, it's obviously intentional. Definitely. I mean, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so we get Mark back in the desert dimension and he's flying finally because I was thinking, why is he walking? Like, wouldn't you fly up and try to see like where you are? And he is still, again, talking to himself with his outer monologue. And he says, you know, I can't find anything. He's like, oh, and just, you know, try to ignore the fact that you just killed somebody. And then he starts saying, like, you know, what's the difference of talking in my head and talking out loud? There's no difference. And I love that they they intentionally had to have Mark express his emotions and thoughts in a way. But he's by himself and who, yeah. who would talk to themselves? So, so people. Out. So so they just called it the fuck out, which yeah. is yeah. fantastic. They can't people can't even hate on it now because they're like, oh, well, the fucking show called it out. Like, yeah. Yeah. So mm-hmm. what can I complain about now? Yeah, I like that. I just, I love how, and they continue to be self-aware. Like, obviously there was, there's, there's nobody here. So inside my head, outside my head, what's the difference? Yeah. What's the difference? Yeah. I'll just talk. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so then we get, uh, he starts to talk about like, oh, well maybe I'll check his body. Maybe he still, his body can still open a portal Yeah, and a portal opens up. And this was a moment where not nearly as uh, shocking for us as chainsaw, but like, oh, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. There are some other guardians here. Yep. So uh, we get knockout, right? And it's Kid Thor, isn't yep. it? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And so uh, we get we get Eve, um, robot, knockout, Kid Thor, bulletproof with gray hair, and Monster Girl sporting that, that onesie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Unitard onesie. Yep. <laughs> um, so Eve instantly gives Mark clothes, his normal clothes. Yeah. And um, they talk about how 20 years have passed since Mark has been gone in their timeline. Mm-hmm. And well, it's, um, it's Mark's robot. Time. It's they're they're yeah. they're well, Mark's it's, it's, they're Mark's Eve and Mark's robot. They're like I just I, the only reason why I'm highlighting this is because they are not from another dimension. They are from Mark's dimension, right. but 20 years yeah. in the future mm-hmm. and haven't had yes. Mark yeah. for 20 years. Yeah. And Robot for 20 years has been working on trying to find the dimension that Mark disappeared to finally found it 20 years later, but then they kind of backtracked in time to find him at that moment in order to, in order to send him. Yeah. They essentially had to travel back in time within their own dimension and then go through the portal and then send Mark, which which I think is alluded to in the line that robot says a little bit later on here, where he tells Mark says, I don't know if I would have survived here. And robot says, favorite line would have, but you wouldn't have liked what you became. Oh, I want to know. I want to know. That's such a cool line. You did, but you wouldn't like what you have become, had become. It's like, oh, like, damn. 
Uh, he also talks about how the Guardians have four working time machines. Yeah. Um, in their in their possession. Um, so they open a portal. He says, "I'm going to send send you back." And uh, Eve, this is where Eve stops him and professes her love. Mm-hmm. So yeah. says that um, when you went away, I was, uh, you know, it it was it broke me, and um, mm-hmm. you know, you need to go back. Don't tell me. Tell her. Tell her you love her. Tell her you don't. Just tell her something so I can move on. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like and great, get, the dialogue is like almost exactly from yeah. the comic like you're reading and it's it's it was cool to hear that and remember it from the comic and be like man that stuff mm-hmm. still really works and and holds up to see it adapted this way so yeah. yeah and there's a moment that like surprised me again because you know robot takes his helmet off and it's obviously an older rudy who grows up to look like rex yep. and he said so much for keeping the timeline intact and eve says i think she says shut up rex yep. yeah and mm-hmm. doesn't call Com- him rudy confirmation confirmation yep. that uh uh jason manzoukas voices older rex mm-hmm. yeah 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 o- older love- older rudy older yeah. rudy yep. yeah or maybe that is rex who knows i yeah. mean we know but <laughs> that was such a that was such a fun moment to read in the comic book too because we it made like, no I'm, sense we're, for like we're ten like, years. What, what was going on? Like we didn't know what was going, and it was such a throwaway thing. Where like did he yeah. fuck? Did did Robert Kirkman fuck up? And yeah. who knows? Maybe he did, and then maybe he like retconned it in that scene. You know? Yeah, maybe. Like, yeah, just maybe. one little line that fixed all of it. You know? Yep. That's great. Doesn't so, fuck it's up. Okay. It probably is. It probably is. He's gonna do. Let's it. let's make sure we ask him. No, that if you too. know what else is in that issue, never mind. Moving on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um. So we get. Oh, so Mark go, is in the house and he's looking for his mom and Oliver, and he flies up and Cecil is in his ear instantly. Oh, because there's a part uh, I I forgot to mention it, but as soon as Mark gets to the house, um, Angstrom disables his earpiece yeah. and yeah. all the other communication between Cecil and that. A so. good thing that they had to throw in there to be like, oh, so why didn't Cecil hear everything? When literally yeah. last episode, he's listening to the conversation with Anissa. Yeah. Um, Cecil, you know, he says, how's mom and, and Oliver? And he's like, well, the kid doesn't have a scratch on him, which mm-hmm. I really liked yeah. um, for yeah. multiple reasons, <laughs> because A, he's a baby and I'd be mad if he had a scratch on him. And B, it's because, oh, well, he might it's be getting kid. his powers sooner than, than we thought. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so we get Debbie in bed and I, I wanted to call my mommy and I wanted to hug her. And I want, I felt, I just felt like a little boy again Yeah, because he, he, she is broken, like physically broken in a hospital bed. And Mark being as strong as he is crawls into that bed with his mom and just cries and yeah. like curls up, yeah. curls up. Is, is it over and he just starts crying like i i want to cry right now it's so <laughs> yeah. it's just such a poignant moment that like as powerful as he is like he still needs his mom mm-hmm. and yeah. and this, is that and that was incredibly traumatic i know we talked all about this but like we we talked about how some of our moms watch invincible um my mother-in-law watches it and part of me wants to just send her a text before this episode and just be like this is going to be tough to watch at at, at times. Yeah. Just know that it's going to be okay and get through it because this is this is it's tough. Be it's okay. like it, it's okay in the end. Like I know that's a bit of a spoiler for her, but like it is. I feel like some some people will have a hard time watching some of that stuff with yeah. Debbie and Oliver and this mm-hmm. this uh, and that scene specifically of them at in the hospital bed. Like w- this season has been filled with moments with Mark and Debbie that are emotional and are heartbreaking. Whether it's Debbie like ripping the the oh, um, yeah. cabinet door off and collapsing, and him holding her. Like this was, I think, the most emotional any of those scenes have been. And and for how even for how little they even speak in it too. Like you said, she just says like, "Is it over?" And he starts crying, and that's all mm-hmm. they say. Like it's it's such a well done scene. Yeah, it's great. As far as like the slow and emotional moments go, this is a standout scene for me. Um, Agreed. So Mark is on the uh, it's, it, next scene is Mark on the roof of the Pentagon and Cecil comes up and says, if you're looking for, you know, some some away time, this isn't really privacy. a great spot to do it. Yeah, privacy. And uh, Cecil spends this entire time taking back everything that he said <laughs> about Mark and trying to convince him that he he's not like his father. And 
Mark is like, you weren't there. You you don't know. And Cecil's like, listen, if the bad guys are dead yeah. and the good guys are alive, that's a good day. In, How do you know the book. difference? Yeah. Well, the yeah. bad guy yeah, yeah. don't usually break the good guy's arm. Or, so the or, thing or that I usually bring yeah. the thing that I loved about this scene the most, and it's one of my favorite things in the entire episode, is in the season premiere of season two, we get a scene where Invincible or Mark is like struggling with who he is as a hero, and they're in the diner, and he wants to go out. He wants to be a part of the GDA. He wants to work for Cecil. Cecil's not having it. There's a part where Mark is sitting at the table and he goes, I'm not my dad. I'm not my dad. This scene starts out with Cecil saying, you're not your dad. And then it ends with Cecil again saying, Mark, you're not him. Love that. Fucking love that so much. Oh, I got chills just saying it. Oh, so good. Yeah. Again, we're getting shows. It it shows. Sorry, Bill. It shows, I think, Mark's mark's evolution from the beginning of the season to the end because cecil is watching mark and cecil is deciding is mark the kind of person that i want to put on the team and put on the guardians and have like going out and doing missions and at the beginning of the season he's like "Mm, i can tell you're kind of angry and you're dealing with some emotional stuff at the end of the season i don't think he's trying to get mark on the team he's just trying to keep mark together he's like i can tell that you have gone through something and that you're at a breaking point and what you need to hear from me right now is that it's okay and that you did the right thing and please don't flip out and go crazy like that cecil is i think afraid of mark almost damage control and trying to just calm him down like it's 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 very well done cecil's always on right he's he's always on he's always assessing the situation and saying the right thing at the right time, what the person needs to hear yeah. again, Ryan for damage control to stop Mark from becoming his dad, because he probably is afraid that he's, yeah. he's like, Oh, well, you're, uh, you're season so three. Yeah. <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> uh, so we get a quick scene of Amanda and Rudy, um, which is super cute because Amanda finally stops being such a dick to Rudy, but <laughs> explains to, to Rudy, like, you were always just coming at me to like fix me. And like, how about you just talk to me for once? Like I like Rudy's, I like Rudy's explanation though. And I, I like it from yeah. both perspectives, but I like Rudy's explanation being like, I'm the guy that fixes things. And you said mm-hmm. yourself that you, that it was a problem. I fix problems. Let me help you. Yeah. Let me help you. And she's yeah. like, well, okay, just don't treat me like TJ said, like I'm a gadget or something. Like mm-hmm. we can do that, but that doesn't have to be the defining thing about a relationship. We could talk about other things. Like yeah. for example, let's go on another date. Um, so I thought that was handled and buttoned up yeah. pretty well. Yeah, yeah, it was. Well, so she like kind of like, like you could ask me on another date and then he kind of haphazardly does. And she's like, yes. And then they eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich together. Yep. Which, I mean, they're adults. They shouldn't be eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich just because it's <laughs> okay. Body. Okay, there's nothing wrong with you. I, I still have peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Of course sandwiches. you fucking eat. You eat PB&J with <laughs> Swedish fish in it. Oh. Brian will eat like I, a I, Brian will eat like a PB and J sandwich on a Monday, but then have like a a croque monsieur sandwich on a Tuesday. Oh damn! Yes. <laughs> there you go. You nailed me. You fucking Brian. Like <laughs> Brian's like that sounds like a great weekly menu. You know, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Starting off the week great. <laughs> and then the the food that I always say is Fig Newtons because it seems like grandpas oh, yeah. eat Fig Newtons. Yep. So you go from yeah. one spectrum, like what a kid eats, <laughs> to then what a grandpa eats, but nowhere in between. Like, do you like pizza? Yeah. That's yeah. It. It's just fine though. Like I mean it's just fine. Everybody throw some, throw some yeah. All right. Uh so uh the next scene we get um quick quick little button up things like TJ was yep. saying like we get I think it was you that said it. Um we get moments so it's immortal fishing go walks into his cabin. We get to see his what I think is his first superhero costume. Yeah. Or one of them. Um, we get the the goblet, the chalice that Jesus Christ drove from, <laughs> drunk from in the Last Crusade, right? What is that called? It's I don't. I can't I remember. Isn't it called something? I'm blanking, I'm blanking on chalice. it. The yeah, it's, it's chalice. Chalice. Uh, we get Abe Lincoln's hat, mm-hmm. um, which was the second nod to Abe Lincoln. We got that in the first season, I think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we right? see him. Yep. Right, and um, so then someone says immortal, and it's Kate Zero. Yep. So surprise everybody. She's alive. So and, and we talked about this um, like off offline too is obviously we knew that Duplicate was coming back cuz we read the comic, but we were all happy that she came back in the finale and not 
in the next season because we do, we didn't want people to feel like it was a cheap trick. Like, oh, like they waited yeah. a season and then they brought up brought yeah. her back because they regretted it. Like, no, this was supposed to happen. So, yep. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Kate continues a- to be, I think, more uh, more well written in the show, at least from my oh, memory yeah. of her in the comics already. Because like her, already. just just her telling him like I was ready to run away because I was tired of dying. Like she was gonna yeah. just disappear, like she had died, but she couldn't because of how she felt about Immortal. Like it's it's a cool way to to show that story playing. Yeah, out. I, it, I mean, having showing this now means that their window for having her brother freak out, you know light spoiler yeah. but not much like duplicate uh, multi paul is in the show we've seen him in the prison a couple times if he uh, gets involved because of her death that window is much smaller so i expect if we're going to see that it will happen very soon in season three i bet we don't yeah i bet yeah. multi paul in Might the prison be. was just a nod that's just that yeah which i'd be fine with could, could be. be yeah could be I mean, it could. We could just see like another quick scene of them fighting, I and think, it gets buttoned up really quick. I think you it happened I mean? within not... the first like ten minutes yeah. of episode one of season three, and and because we got to have immortal and duplicate come back, and I'd like to see everybody's reaction to her being alive. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and and Wyatt, to your point, like duplicate is one thousand percent more well written and and fleshed out in the show because. I, I talked about it a lot. Like I had an obsession about duplicate. Like what, <laughs> what is her power? Like, does she, yeah. does she feel that she's dying? Like, do they share the same conscious? And it answered it yeah. with flying colors. I mean, we see her having sex with a mortal and her self. That's not experiencing that. And then that's the main thing that brings her and a mortal together is that they've died the yeah. same amount of times, pretty much like, yeah. and lived just as long because of how, how often she's died. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> so then we go back to, a random ass scene in the desert with two women and it's the mummy. It's a return to the mummy. And you know what guys, the mummy. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. The mummy um, returns. The mummy returns. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Don't watch the previously on dude. Right. Aren't you guys because glad it, we didn't? I'm yeah, so glad you it. didn't have us watch that. Ryan, we said it last week. Showed, yeah. <laughs> yep. We said it last it, week. Hey, if you can, don't watch it. And so we took our own advice and we managed to avoid the previously mm-hmm. on. Um, and we had no idea this was coming. No idea. Yeah. And it's the first thing they show on the previously on. It's like the fucking mummy thing. And we're yeah, like, yeah. oh, well, loaded mm-hmm. gun. We know it's going to be yeah, in the episode. The the mummy, like it, it may. Um, what's his name? Kohor. Kohor. Yeah, like yeah. maybe he'll show up in season two, but this late in the season I finale, I like not only in the season finale, it. but this late in the season finale, like holy, yeah, wow. So, Big so surprise. I, I appreciate know, it from the other point like of view, it. though. If you did happen to see it first, it is kind of funny that it's like, oh shit, this guy's gonna be in this episode, and then for it to be another gag, like, yeah. and, yeah. and be buttoned up in a way that it's like, well, they're trapped in here with this guy again, and yeah. yeah. I thought it was but funny. again, we get it's not just two dimensional characters like we get a little bit of a fucking story with this woman. She's like, oh, don't worry, I can lift it. I, well, I can lift a big truck. And she's like, oh, where'd you get your powers from? Yeah. And then from she my explains that she got it from her grandma's side. Which so made me like, think like, it's is not this, even two... this woman? What made me think like, is, is this is this uh, <laughs> in, in present time? Or is this like very far in the future? Maybe she got her powers from War Woman. Maybe, you know what I mean? Like maybe oh. she's something like that. Like mm-hmm. I thought maybe like this is something that happened way in the future or way in the past. Oh. Originally I thought way in the past, but then she made a comment about um, how uh, I got my powers from my mother back then, like you, or grandmother. And back then you had to wear a bathing suit um, to be like a superhero. To be a hero, yeah. 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 And yeah. uh, I mean, not to mention that it shows Mark like fly over in in present time. But but like, in the t- yeah. 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 That's I how that, it, this yeah. scene ends. I thought it was. So another. Which, so we get. So it's so, not just her that has superpowers, though, but the other character has the same yeah. uh, scarab tattoo, tattoo as her father. Mm-hmm. So it's like as her learning. father. Yeah. Because she's like, oh, dad, like she like they find the corpse and he's all drained, just like the mummy movie where they take yep. his eyes and tongue. Um, and then Kahura comes out and Clancy Brown voices every character in the show. <laughs> um, I, 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 I laugh when I hear him talk now in this kind of voice, because he does a lot of voices in Rick and Morty too. And yeah. in story train, he's like, 
it all started on the planet Ramamama. And, and <laughs> <laughs> I fucking die anytime. So when he's like, a Kahur, and I'm like, all I want to say is Ramamama. So, <laughs> um, but he's like, oh, you're women. I, 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 I must I, have it a male host in order to, like, you know, yeah, break like, oh, the curse or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. And then we get a scene. So it's it starts to rumble inside the, the thing. And they're like, oh, no, what's going on? And it's Mark flying over at Mark Mach 10. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. And covering it with dust again. And so they're trapped yeah. in there. And then maybe we see another moment of this guy. <laughs> yeah. And so this guy's going to be like a huge threat in season 10, right? Like, is that what it's <laughs> yeah. going to be? It's just going to be the joke yeah. thing until. Yeah. Yeah. Final, whatever the final season is, he yes. will be a big deal. Yes. Yeah. So there are only two songs in this entire episode. Um, it's the, the name of the game or whatever it is by um fat boy slim and then whatever this one is so it's a montage it's of mark flying called because this song is, is great kiwanaka so Ka- kiwanaka by michael kiwanaka okay so it's just it's you can tell that it's licensed music in the in the beginning but it doesn't really like kick in until a little bit after but mark is just flying and he's i'm sorry it's called, it's called much... final days the the that was the yeah. album name it's called final okay. days by michael kiwanaka sorry hmm. so he he's getting a, he has montage of like him wanting to be like his dad and then the next one is the the think mark think scene um the cecil scene he sees the that diner. so he's just reliving yeah he's reliving all of those moments and and now this new thing of him having killed somebody as a, as a, a kid, he's what, 19? Yep. Right? First yeah, year of college? Graduated high school, yeah. 19, mm-hmm. 20 maybe? 19? Yeah. Um, so he flies so fast. I don't oh, know yeah. if I loved this part. Um, but him going from like light I, day into night? Oh, that was cool. I love that. Him going yeah, from, yeah. from day to night, like crossing time zones and stuff. Yeah. But him like flying so fast that yeah. he that he's like flying through space and time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, that was a little. It felt a little out of place. I guess. I get. I like the effect of it, but are you worried that people are going to take it as though he's like going cosmic and like? Yeah, that he he entered the speed force. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, and, like the Flash because it looked very. No, I get that. It was, it, it was jarring for a moment for me only because it's the first time we've seen that happen. But it mm-hmm. did just I think it was meant to really just show not only how how much like Mark is dealing with and how high his emotions are, but like that he is also getting stronger than we've known him to be before, especially yeah. after just having him fly over the desert. We see in season one when he flies over the desert with Omni Man, that's when they're like race you to the mountain or whatever and he's like upset because he can't keep up with his dad and now in this one to see him flying faster than we've ever seen him before yeah showing that he's now like forcing himself to to push himself yeah Yeah. i mean it's i think it's kind of known that like viltramites the strongest ones can almost travel at the speed of light like they can move so fast that they can pretty much 99.9 percent of it and i think this was maybe mark hitting that mark he's, so yeah uh, like a little of, bit yeah yeah like and that's kind of what it was like all the lights like city lights and stuff like that was just like blurring by him and i know? like that so. he's doing this in this intense emotional mm-hmm. state and then he just kind of like passes out almost and just kind of like floats oh um, that yeah. so that's a good part so he stops and he looks at his hands and it flashes to bloody hands back to his hands and that's when he stops and he just falls mm-hmm. and like floats yeah. down and and then takes off Kind of like um, episode one. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what I was going to say. I was, say, I was almost expecting if they hadn't five. already been playing music, I would have expected Radiohead again. Right. Radiohead, <laughs> like as yeah. a callback. Oh, to that, that would have been pretty cool, Wyatt. <laughs> but but this song, I it love. Really it's good. such a great like. It's it's up there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he goes to Upstate University and spies on Amber. Not spies, but you know, checks in on her. Looks like he's gonna go say hi, and like he starts to fly down, and then flies away and she looks up and misses him can i talk about the last thing that amber does potentially in this entire show she looks up she looks up oh i like that that. come on are you kidding me so they didn't get this moment so we didn't have that conversation in the comics but for that i think it's intentional (laughs) 
I like I'm it. taking it. I'm taking it. <laughs> Write that down as things to ask Kirkman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what a, his answer is. Be like, yeah, well, sure, right. Yeah, 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 of course. It's obviously what it is. Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, so good. And he's obviously not here. there. And she just, yeah. she like kind of smirks and moves on. Like, that's it. Yeah. What a fucking ending for that yeah. relationship. Like, I know everybody has yeah. seen it now. Like, when we're recording this, everybody's seeing it. And it seems to have gone over so well. Like, their relationship and how it was all done from season one till now incredible yeah yep yep um so the next thing we get is is them standing outside the house that's being rebuilt and someone on a bike goes by and is like that's so crazy like the house across the street blew up because of a gas leak he's like maybe i should check check out my stuff and get my house inspected again yeah Mark's like um, yeah you can never be too careful yeah <laughs> um so they walk in the house and then it's uh uh debbie or the the tutor comes takes takes oliver up to bed and debbie goes up to mark's room and he's on the roof sitting and my god guys what an amazingly convincing conversation that mark had Mm -hmm. to his mom and they have this is where it's very very obvious that they have matching black eyes like it's Mm -hmm. very obvious that it was on purpose and and they're just so gross (laughs) gross <laughs> yeah, yeah they're just yeah, so puffy yeah. and big and purple it's like the second time we see mark cry again and it's just like, like leaking yeah. out of the like line yeah. that is his eye yeah yeah it's, it's awful yep yeah so he he's like i'm gonna quit college it's literally pointless what am i gonna do code or like yeah, what with, with everything that i can do <laughs> yeah be a dentist and then and then it's not about him quitting college because he's a superhero it's about him quitting college and having to focus on himself to be better than he is. He needs, yeah. to, he said it so many times. He's like, mom, I, I have to be better. Like, and then he looks at her. He's like, do you understand? As in, do you know who dad is? And do you know what I'm capable of and what I could do? He's, and I need to focus on me. And she finally, because she puts up a little bit of the mom fight, right? And then yeah, she she's finally is talking like, about how like, oh, it's more than I just finding what you want to do. Good. And then he's just yeah. like, he's, he's gone. Like it's so, yeah. With that too, I think that it's weird because it this season kind of put Mark in the middle of what he's capable of because it's on one end, it's like, you know, you went too far, you killed somebody, right? Like you gotta know your own strength and you gotta pull back. But he also got his fucking ass kicked all all season too. So it's like the Viltramites are coming. So you need to yeah. fucking train up and fucking yeah, like yeah. be be strong oh, enough that's, to, and prepared yeah, for that. That's that's so it's a little that's what bold. I like about yeah, that's what I like about him saying that is that it's it is twofold. It is number one, what he's dealing with from this episode of I can lose control and kill people, and I killed somebody, and I'm capable of that. So I have to con- I have to fix that yes. about myself. And two, if I don't get stronger and can't control myself and make myself a better fighter, a better protector, like then the planet is doomed. Like he has all of that piled on top of him that, and it would have been enough, even if we hadn't had the whole angstrom fight, like he could have broken Mm -hmm. down this way just after the, the Anissa incident, knowing that like, I have to be the one to stop them. So I, I have to focus on this. So to add on the trauma of him thinking that he's now a killer, like is such a, I love too much. I love that the whole meme after episode or season one was that, Invincible just can't win a fight. He's never winning a fight. He's constantly losing, constantly losing all throughout season two. All right, guys, he won a fight and it fucked him up. Like <laughs> yeah, now, yeah. now all season three is going to be. Are you happy? Are you happy? This is what he you won. wanted. <laughs> like this is, and now it's going to be dealing with the fact that he won a fight and yeah. it just completely destroys him. I mean, that's. Yeah, man. Ugh. Yep. Um, so then we get, uh, Mark is flying over the teen teams, like the bridge, right? Mm-hmm. And he saying. kind of, yeah, I think he goes to to meet Eve. I'm assuming. Well, right? I think it was. I yeah. I don't think that's their current base, right? I think that's their old base, and Eve is staying there. Yeah, it's the yeah. old base. Yeah, yeah, yeah she stayed yeah. like like Eve last time. There. It was crashing right. there. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So she she meets Mark, hugs him, um, and they sit down. They have a moment, and Mark. You feel like he's gonna tell her, right? Like he's he's gonna he tell her to. something. They 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 cross pinkies, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which was like my heart was like pounding, like oh my god. <laughs> um, and then he has this moment where 
he was about to tell her something and she looks at him and says, what? And I just wrote down Eve's pretty hair because it's a moment where like her hair Wind waves, blowing, yeah. waves in her face and she like, it looks, I don't know, she it, looks really pretty. I think it reminds yeah. him of who she is, who yeah. the, the one that spoke to her, the sad older Eve that professed her yeah. love to him. Um, and right. we know that a little bit from the comics and his reaction to this. Um, and especially like, well, and especially even that in the show, we have not really had Mark talking about how he feels about Eve. He's yeah. never really, we've seen moments where it seems like Eve, you know, goes to Mark's window, but sees that him and Amber are together. So you, we kind of already know that Eve probably has some feelings for Mark, but Mark's never really talked about that. So for him to sit there and stare at her after having been told by the older Eve, tell her something, tell her how you feel. I feel like it's Mark sitting in that moment being like, how do I feel about yeah, her? Like exactly. she's been this close friend to me. What is my, what is my connection to her? How do I feel? And he doesn't quite know how to say it yet. He's like, not he ready yet. I, I, exactly I, I took it pretty similar. I think that that was his first time that he looked at her and thought like, like I do have feelings for her. But yeah, yeah, if it's if it or even even thought to think of her in that way in the first place, probably, mm -hmm. you know, because he's been yeah. so caught up with Amber and everything else. Um, but yeah, uh, exactly. Like it's, taking his it's time just cool to that, that out before he says anything. It's the smart yeah. and mature thing to do, even though it sucks. It's just cool that she's like, tell her you love her, tell her you don't tell her something. And the time comes and he says nothing. And he doesn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's that's, Which I think that's the time based on what we're seeing, the viewers seeing. Yes. But mm -hmm. yeah. of it, course. Yeah. It just makes Mark that much better of a guy. You know, like he's not that that typical, like jumping at, at mm -hmm. any moment of a girl who likes him, you know what I mean? Yeah. Who's pretty. Like yeah. he he literally has restraint and I don't know. Like TJ, you said it mature. Like it's really, really, really mature of Mark to not dive into a romantic situation after experiencing what he just did. Murder, breaking up with his girlfriend. Like who, what kind of fucking asshole would you be if you were like, Hey, yeah, let's, let's, I like you. Let's date, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, and then Eve like kind of reads into his emotions and, and she just says, it's not fair. You don't deserve this. You don't deserve any of this. Yeah. And for it so. to end on that, like the back of them, and Mark like looks at her, yeah, and, and like she even repeats that she says, touch heads, "You don't deserve yeah. this." Yeah, yeah. And like, correct me if I'm wrong. Like, we never really got that for comic book Mark. Mm -hmm. Like, no, no one ever like grabbed him and was like, "You don't deserve this." Like, yeah. mm -hmm. this isn't fair. You're not your um, father. Which is what I was saying at at, at the beginning. Like you know, it came, became kind of, you know, funny that like, Hey, this market's dealt so much shit, you know? And it's like, there was never this person to say, you don't deserve this. And yeah. so for that to be the moment in this point in their relationship to be like, this is, this is someone that understands him and is there for him in a different way. And even Amber says to Eve, when talking about Mark, that he needs somebody that knows what it's like to be a superhero that knows what it's like to deal with this stuff. Um, and for her to, for Eve to recognize that and to say what Mark needs to hear in that moment, all he's hearing is that you're not your dad, you're not your dad, you're not your dad. But she's the one to, she's not saying that thing that he doesn't want to hear. He knows he's not his dad. He he doesn't believe that. He doesn't believe what everybody's telling him. But yeah. instead, she's saying you don't deserve it, which is something that hasn't been told to him yet. And yeah. he's like stunned, and he just lays his head on her shoulder. And, and like, I don't know about that though. I think he does, I because do, at the way the the Cecil one ended was was Cecil saying you're not your dad and his response was you weren't there no he does believe he is like his dad yeah. like he yeah, believes he line. believes that but everybody keeps saying that and he doesn't need to hear that like that's yeah. he doesn't believe what I'm saying is he doesn't believe when people say that right that's not mm -hmm. what he needs to hear and to your to your point of saying that we didn't really get a moment like this in the comics I think that is what that really like encapsulates what the show is doing so well is it's still telling the same story and hitting the same themes and character arcs that the, that the characters are going on. Like Mark struggles with the fact of whether or not it's okay that he killed somebody that happens yeah. in the comic, but no, but he also, we, but, but he doesn't get to curl up next to his mom and cry because of yeah. the trauma of it. Like it's, 
this show is giving us those moments to allow the characters to breathe and react mm -hmm. to the trauma that they're going through constantly that makes it feel more grounded and more real yeah. than I think it even does in the comic. Yeah. yeah. And Mark is think about Mark's submissive nature that he's had since he got back from that dimension, like hugging his mom and being curled up. You know what I mean? And then yeah. him being like, he's resting his head on Eve's shoulder. Like he's bigger than Eve. And it's just like, it's very like touching and heartbreaking to see Mark. Right. This it, yeah, broken. we we had all these predictions like, oh, it's going to end with him stranded. It's going to end with him donning a new suit. And it's all these things. And it's like, no, it's going to end with him being told it's not your fault and sitting next to Eve and putting his head on his shoulder. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, so it's like, yeah, I trust these writers. They know what they're doing. Yeah. Oh, they're better yeah, than for us. Sure. <laughs> God, I'm so, so much better than us. So much better. <laughs> if you were have for any doubt, <laughs> you yeah. have the most uneven show written ever, <laughs> ever. Yeah. Um, so that's it. That's the end. We get, we get nothing else just the credits. And then after the credits, <laughs> we get, um, Alan, and no one's sitting in their cells and Alan's having the telepathic conversation with um, no one about, I met your son. Like we're going to start fighting the Viltramites and, and no one's like, I'm not a Viltramite anymore. He's like, I feel shame. I feel regret. I see beings that are lesser than me and I feel bad and I want to help them. I was um, like, yeah, that's yeah. Yeah, and then, and then he's like, it, it's, it's, you know, sounds like you don't care if you die. And he, and no one was like, I really don't. Like, um, and at one point, Alan's like, oh my God, come on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah let's, and then probably the, like, oh my God, it's just such good writing, guys, because the whole scene is telepathic. It's in their head. And then no one says, and you know what? And then he speaks. He's like, I think I miss my wife. And he speaks it. And that's the last bit that we yeah. hear. It's not him telling two. somebody. It's him announcing it, it to himself. Like it's him yeah. saying it out loud. Yeah. yeah. Very yeah. cool. The Great. end. And now we have nothing. We have nothing. <laughs> we have nothing until November of 2024. Yeah. That's you won't change my mind. Wrong. You won't change my mind. No. I'm very curious because we're recording this obviously a few days before the finale airs. I'm very curious to see if once the finale airs, if we get any sort of tease, maybe an, a release window about anything about season three, since we know that that's have been that has been worked on for a while now. Um, so yeah, curious. And I can hopeful, see but... I can see them saying like it being something like Invincible will return in 2024, 2025. It will no, it'll be yeah. that. No, no, no. These days, nobody releases dates less than less. Man, uh, unless it's yeah. within six months. Unless it's within six months, don't put a date on something. You never unless know. You're, unless you're Bethesda and you say Skyrim, you know, Elder Scrolls Six is coming out, <laughs> and it's and it's been fucking eight years yeah. since the announcement. <laughs> I don't think there's any reason to put a date on it. Yeah. yeah. No. Well. So that that is it. And uh, we we have we end each show. Um, with what was your a favorite? Doodle. Sorry, what was your favorite moments from the from the show? Mm. Or from, from the, season two. From this episode, episode. I'm going to say this episode. We'll do, I'll we'll start do, uh... and I'll say just as a favorite moment, the moment that got the biggest reaction, I think, of like at least the biggest happy reaction because this was filled with stress and sadness mm -hmm. was Chainsaw Man. Like I can't, I still can't Chainsaw believe Man. it happened. <laughs> yeah, Chainsaw mm -hmm. Man. <laughs> Chainsaw the Fox <laughs> was so shocked by it. Um, such a cool, you know, Easter egg for comic readers. Man, I don't. Yeah, I, don't, I mean, I don't, I don't. I don't know if I could pick a. Uh, favorite part i guess like the moments that surprised and shocked me were obviously the stuff with angstrom um chainsaw was a huge one uh, agent spider um was another one but i think i think the surprise to me because i wasn't you guys were all like "Ooh, sterling k brown you know from that fucking show that everybody loves and i was like i don't really know who this guy is and now i fucking know who he is right because yeah. of yeah. what he did you should watch this is us he is by far the best character yeah, he's yeah, but he's not. He can't be like that. He can't be that good. In <laughs> well, us. He doesn't throw any he's babies. Amazing. I bet. In he's this amazing. amazing. He's well, then I'm not babies. interested. I'm not interested <laughs> until a baby gets thrown. I'm not interested. There are a lot of babies, but no throw. No, they're not getting thrown. Uh, yeah, it's got to be. I mean, it's got to be cutting to all the different Angstroms. 
not only yeah. did that support this character so much in in its development but also like such a cool thing with the chainsaw stuff and all the other character uh, all the other fun nods and seeing the different marks and how violent it was and it was just a cool thing that we didn't get in the comics that just makes so much sense yeah i like that yep. yeah mm -hmm. tj Chain chainsaw is the, is the definitive answer obviously but yeah. again i do love the call back to the to the first episode and, of season two with cecil saying you're not your dad i just i love that yeah. so much and the yeah. i mean the last line like right before it says written by robert kirkman that moment with eve on the bridge the first time we watched it it was very like somber and quiet and we all just kind of sat there in silence it's like huh but then like the more you think on it it's just god it's just yeah such the a great behind it. great yeah. ending okay so bill you were saying yeah, so we end each of these recaps with a doodle. Uh, it doesn't have to be our favorite part, just uh, you know, any any old part. Um, so who wants to go? I think the time has come. First. We've started this with season two. This will be our eighth doodle. Yeah, and I think the time has come. At least three of us drew the same thing. Oh, you think no, so? I, 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 no, maybe I, three. Definitely I, two. Listen, okay. listen, okay. okay. I. I got home from We've gotten close before. And I got I got home at like 6:15ish, right? I came upstairs, I posted my my notes on the wall, <laughs> and I started drawing. And I drew for about 45 minutes. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, oh, yeah. stop. Dude, I'm mine was about a half hour. I drew Not for stop. mine time. Really? Dude, <laughs> my, yes, yeah. Mine is going to be the worst yeah. because I put like normal effort into it, like maybe maybe <laughs> 10 to 15 minutes max. If uh, mine is lacking. I could go first, but how about this? Go, Ryan. go first, TJ. No, go, yeah. go first. Yeah, because I'm. Let's go with TJ. First. This is definitely none of you guys drew this for sure. Okay. I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna guess that TJ drew chainsaw. But Maybe. I saw some green. I saw some green. Oh, we're Let me seeing guess that's probably the portal. <laughs> but what's in the portal? How? When am I ever going to be able to draw and yeah. bring my two? Biggest loves as a nerd, Invincible and. Oh yeah, oh, oh nice, that's, that's awesome. awesome. Nice. So a his bat arm, signal in the I mean, background. Listeners, uh, Invincible's arm coming through the portal, and there's Gotham City with the bat symbol. Uh, GCPD signal, and signal Wing Tower. In, yeah, in very background. nice. Oh, thank you. Well done. Uh, no, so tough, Ryan, how about you it. say thank you? How about you say what you think everybody drew, and then whoever drew that has to show it. That's a good idea. I think what everybody think? drew what I drew. Yeah. Which so, is, so, so you oh, say so it. You're so you're Ryan drew, and then he can reveal, and then he All can right. reveal. I, I'll, I I'll reveal. Know. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I don't know what you drew, because you always go with the, like, the inanimate objects. So <laughs> I'm going to guess the knife being thrown at the portal. It was a thought. It was definitely a thought. Okay. And then I had the thought. I was like, I drew a knife. I drew the the Donald knife. Oh, yeah. And did. I was like, I'm just going to be drawing that again. I didn't want to. Yeah. Hmm. All I can think about is what I drew, and I think it's what you drew. Yeah, man. <laughs> All right. So who else drew something Agent Spider related? Not, not, nope. No not one me. drew Agent Spider? No. Nope. Nope. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. It's really good. Nice. That is very good. No, I drew. I drew an agent. Red goggles. The A. That's very yeah. good. His suit hides the collarbones, which I think was a smart choice. <laughs> oh, yeah. You didn't have to worry about the collarbones. Artistically, yeah. Yeah. Yep. I was uh, really happy with that one. Why? Now I feel like maybe we we drew. <laughs> maybe. So possibly. shoot, if none of you drew Someone that, then a, I'm gonna guess. Chainsaw? Yeah. Did one of you draw a chainsaw? So, I here I'm going to tell you about two drawings that I started and then realized it was not good <laughs> and stopped. One of them was chainsaw and I was like this does not look I, like a fox anymore. I'm not going to draw this. Yep. And then another one that I was going to draw that was meant to be as a joke uh that would just be very funny. I was going to draw Debbie doing the diving catch but in like full football gear. <laughs> oh dude, that was <laughs> really again too complicated. Couldn't draw it. I, made I actually have a joke too. I, I actually like have that two doodles because nicole wanted to draw a doodle as well nicole oh. watched it with me so i have a little bonus doodle that i'll show nicole's first okay because we talked about uh especially being a mother or being a parent the scene oh with my Mark, god uh, oh, curled oh, out geez. Next to Debbie. jesus that's amazing yeah it was very I very want to cry, detailed. I want to cry. <laughs> exactly got, exactly he even has the black eye and everything yeah wow. yeah 
So she wanted to draw that one, talked about, same as we did, of, of how emotional it is to see him still being, you know, as a parent, wanting to help your kid no matter how big they are, no matter no matter how big their problems are, and just not being able to. So that was yep. Nicole's drawing. Did one of you draw Mark flying through space, basically th flying really fast? I, I did not. I okay. thought about I drawing uh, Mark, like it's in the comic, and I was going to try and recreate it, but there's no way I could do it. So I didn't. <laughs> was like either Mark flying or like with Angstrom, or I, I don't know, but then drawing lines in the background and drawing different portals. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. In the comic, that would be cool. No way I had time for that or the talent. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will reveal mine then. Uh, oh. First time I've used color in one of my doodles. Oh. God damn it. I had we drew the same thing. We drew I don't the same we, thing. I don't know if we, we did because thing. this was not a thing that you guys realized what it was when we talked about it. Oh. I drew Mark coming through with the how good Fortnite that is. That's awesome. <laughs> coming to hit Angstrom with the Fortnite gun. Oh, that's nice. perfect. Yeah. Great use of we color. We did not draw the same thing. We did not draw the same <laughs> I can't thing. believe we did that. I mean, <laughs> other okay. than uh, two scenes closely related with Alan's, you know, getting getting eviscerated, yeah. we uh, we never really had a repeat. And we had a little bit of close of Bill doing uh, Rex punching yeah. the King Lizard. Oh, and yeah, yeah. PJ drew just PJ. the arm. Just the arm. Yeah. Yeah. Slightly similar, but not 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 as close as I thought. Okay. Yeah. Would get. Any any final guesses? Good, as I'm to all out. Cahor? What mine is? I'm really fucking proud of this, guys. Like, I was, like, showing Riker. <laughs> I showed Remy, and I'm like, Remy, do you know what this is? And she was, she, she said exactly what it was. Oh I God, like to think this ready? has been a bit, and you've been lying about how yeah, much time you took, like and it's going to be a stick figure. Oh, Holy crap! That's so good, Bill. What? <laughs> that's Look at awesome. The, I actually took a little bit of blood out of the, the drips on the bottom to show, like, yeah. the light reflecting. See? Yeah. That's so good. good. That's no. great, Bill. Wow. So Bill drew yeah. Mark like over angstrom's body just dripping blood yeah for the listeners. that's awesome yeah. and it's great i thought about that scene but then thought like how am i gonna do red on top of the like black lines and markers so kudos yeah. to you for figuring it out did wow. you have to draw that for you no i didn't i swear <laughs> to god i was sitting <laughs> on the kitchen table like and i literally had the scene because i knew what i wanted to draw and because i found a red marker in my desk and i'm like oh well i have to fucking do it um and i i just had the scene out and then i just looked at it and followed every yeah. single line See, that that's I could. what i've been doing yeah <laughs> and then you just erase lines and redo it and just keep yeah. erasing yeah yep yep look at so, us <laughs> that's it guys this is our final episode of uh the invincible show reviews yeah so, so we'll be yeah. we'll, we, we might i mean if you're hearing this we interviewed Robert Kirkman. We had him back on the show. Maybe he was on this episode. Not sure about that yet, but maybe you heard him already. But yeah. either way, um, we've got uh, next episode, which will probably be fairly soon. We have a couple guests lined up. We're going to be doing most likely a recap episode just because we got to hear all of your thoughts on the yeah. finale. So we'll be back to talk about that, back to see your doodles on the finale. Um, so it won't be long before you hear from us again. Um, go buy the art book. It's amazing. Oh, it's um, so good. And we'll talk more about that at the top of this episode, I guess. So whatever. Yeah. We're we'll, already uh, about it. Yeah. <laughs> so that's it. So follow us on YouTube. The videos that we do are, are I, I think, much more entertaining than just listening to the podcast. But I understand that, you know, watching an hour and a half long video is a little bit harder to do. Um, follow us on Twitter. Um, on TikTok, we also, uh, Wyatt does a fantastic job. Um, and yeah, that's it. You can go to um, our website, Invincible theinvinciblepodcast.com and check out like reading um orders and all that fun stuff and uh that's that's pretty much it and please god send in your doodles for <laughs> yeah. the final episode yeah all right that does it all right thank you all yeah. have a good one till next time okay bye bye bye, bye. 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 I'm well, going to ask a question that everybody wants wants to know that you're not going to that you you may or may not answer, but I'm going to ask it anyways and just gauge your facial expressions. In between season one and two, we got a an amazing Adam Eve special. Season two, 
had a lot of really cool Rex Blode stuff where he talked about stuff that like you, you don't know about like oh he, he, he spent a year and a half in each room like what's that about like, like I don't know like oh um, his face got more and more <laughs> less excited. <laughs> I almost thought he was because he was just. 